Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday Sound Stream. We have news. There's definitely news. Uh, we are going to be doing a fun time. Before we get too far, I want to I want to uh, say shout out to Falcons Tech and welcome to the Sound Squadron Commander tier. Uh, thank you for your support on the channel. I uh, really appreciate it. So, uh, just like uh, last month, we're doing another members only uh, Ask Me Anything stream after this stream. I just looking at the camera now, I realize I forgot to shave. Anyways, um, <laughs> there, so, you're, getting, you're getting bearded sound up. <laughs> you're getting slightly shadowed sound out, which is appropriate for the news. Yes, we will be talking about shadow. <laughs> um, so, the thing is, is uh, basically, if you're a member at any tier, you can join the after show Ask Me Anything, which will happen. Whenever this stream is done, we'll take like a 15-minute break, and then we'll come back and do the, the AMA. So uh, if you guys want to join as a member, hit the join button down below. And uh, if you're in at $1 a month and up, uh, you, can, you can join in uh, to that stream. And it will be archived later in case, you, uh, in case you missed the live. You can totally catch it on the archive. So there we go. Um, yeah, and Master Ben says the return of Halloween sound out. Halloween sound out was like four or five weeks of not shaving. <laughs> so we're not there yet but of course we need to introduce our floating voices of the void that i will eventually get blinking icons for when i remember we need to do that uh it's yeah. i know i see it every time on couch streams and i'm like i need to do that oh, you should have reminded me oh man yeah, yeah I I keep forgetting. To uh anyways oh. welcome fighter cows how you doing jerry yeah i'm doing pretty good today uh sunny day out uh, I think I can get some stuff done finally, so I'm pretty happy about that. So heck yeah! Also, King of Tuesdays comes back. Well, yeah, really that's exciting. Friend. I'm hyped. I'm excited, especially because SNK is the not scummy company making fighting exactly. games. Exactly. But that's a topic for tomorrow. <laughs> I actually <stream>. uninstalled <laughs> Tekken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't touched Tekken since the Battle Pass. I I uninstalled it. I didn't delete wow. it. Yeah. Because in case, because I was like, I, I, but I moved it to my hard drive to. Yeah, if I need room, I'm gonna time. move it too. I'm not, I'm not keeping it on there right now. Uh, hey Ryan, what's up? How's it going? So Santa. Yeah. Do you remember? So Santa, do you remember it? I. Look, I'm just gonna say for anybody that hasn't watched X Men '97, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. In. And that's all I'm going to say. That, yes, in case you guys didn't see X-Men 97, it was emotionally heartbreaking and devastating. And I, I still haven't fully recovered, to be honest. But it was amazing. And that, I haven't seen a show do anything like that in a long time. But we're not going to talk spoilers, because I know not everybody's seen it. And I want to make sure people uh, see it. Um, okay, so. Let me do the shout-outs. Uh, oh, the yeah, shout-out to the um, chat. Uh, Sorry, I'm, like, forgetting things so, already. Um, um, Master, shout out to, uh, welcome, Master Ben, Zelchex, Mizeki T, Toko Texas Cosplay, SC4 Jason, Dr. Grid, uh, Spin Dash, Soap Man, Karen Metter, uh, ooh, Jamie's World, Psycho O's, uh, Falca Tech, our new channel member, Sagogos of the Kaiju of Krypton, Jeremy Carr, and that's everybody. So, um, so, girl, uh, so Targo's want to ask, will yes. you talk about the rumor DC reboot such Marvel Ultimate, like, DC line? We will talk about it when it's official. Okay, yeah, that's still like details. early. But yeah, yeah, because that's it's I, like was, rumored was... to be announced at San Diego Comic Con. So I'm like, yeah, I, I we'll, hmm. we'll talk about it later. Um, in the in the chat, keep your spoilers out. No, no spoilers for X Men '97 in the chat. No spoilers for Bluey because apparently Bluey had a big episode. I don't follow Bluey, but like, <laughs> I, I I saw people like. Oh, first X Men ninety seven, now Bluey. Um, <laughs> so, like, yeah, we'll just keep the chat. We'll just keep everything out of the chat. For the advantage. Uh, uh, if you guys want to discuss the spoilers to either shows, join our Discord in the link below and use the spoiler uh, covers, and uh, that way you guys can ch chat to your heart's content with the uh, spoiler uh, the, tags. Ah, so. uh, the advantage of uh, weekly releases. Am I right? Yep. Well, I love weekly releases. My favorite thing. Like right now, I've got, I've got. Bad Batch and X Men and Sandland and Star Trek Discovery and Doctor Who's next month. Like I'm, I, I love weekly releases. It's the best. Um, so that's that. Uh, I think that's. I mean, I could go. What What else has happened oh, speak last out. week? Oh, oh yeah, Mika, how's your what's your Who recap this week? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Doctor Who finished series eight. Watched the Christmas special. Started series nine. Um, I am convinced that Missy is the best 
version of insert blank character here because I don't want to spoil it. Um, yeah, that I've I know, ever right? Missy, and Missy's great. I don't know why Michelle Gomez doesn't have all of the acting awards ever. Because between <laughs> this feel- and Doom Patrol, like she should just get all the awards ever. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about Capaldi as uh, the doctor? Um, I didn't really like him for most of season eight, if I'm going to be honest. It it wasn't until the end of the season where I was like, okay, I'm on board now. It took me a while to warm up to him. He was very rough. <laughs> it just, I it love, just was I love, rough. I love Capaldi, but some of his best stuff is after his first series. Yeah, I, I, I feel like he had, uh, he had Star Trek Next Generation Syndrome of like, the ideas were there, they just weren't fully working together yet and so i'm like i'm really excited to see like the rest of season series series nine um spin dash says it's pk say I'm looking forward to that um yeah i'm i'm Tem- steaming Tem- ahead on doctor who at this rate at the rate that i'm watching it with my mom we're going to be done before may 10th Kevin, Matt, do you mean when you say t- favorite team t era do you mean like comics or like era like century era 20 like 2012 era rise which era which you had to be a little more specific because team is that big of a franchise <laughs> yeah i don't know if it's for show like i guess i can just answer if it's comics it's idw if it shows it's my brain just short circuited because i like them yes. all um <laughs> yes uh, master Man, so so he's still so, yeah. master Man, so he's war from ds9 War from yeah, War from DS9 is a good comparison. He's really got to he's really oh, got to warm up. You got to warm up to finally, it. When he finally gets W's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the old joke if I've never seen Star Trek. Yeah, no, Jerry knows a lot about Star Trek. Um, what do you get into the Doctor Who comics? I asked Jamie's World. I would not. And I I not that I don't want to. It's just a lot. It's a lot. And I don't want to <laughs> deal with it. Um, Let's be glad that there's no yeah. really good collector's line for Doctor Who figures. <laughs> I know. I saw uh, I saw a couple of the three and three quarter inch figures at my comic shop, and I was like, "Why do these look like crap?" <laughs> now, the character like character authors used to be really good making yeah. the figures, but not like they really um, cheapen and use a lot of outdated tactics mm. <laughs> to this day. Like it feels like they're like they feel like they're still making figures uh, figures that uh, from the mid two thousands to this day, yeah. which is not really great because there's a lot of junk clunk into them um jamie's world asked about the big big finish uh radio all your dramas i don't know that's also a lot that's also a lot yeah there's definitely stuff often so my friends tell me like they're like fantastic but there is i saw like there's one with like christopher eccleson and river song and i'm like that sounds like fun i might pick and choose with the big finish no that's the best way to choose like choose your favorite doctor i don't i don't think i'm gonna i don't think i'm gonna be going like i need to see i need to listen to all yeah no they're self from i told they're self-contained so you you can just pick and choose your favorite doctor and all that stuff um That's good. To, that's good to hear because I like to pick and choose. I'll watch everything that's like on a screen media, but I'm gonna pick and choose otherwise. Um, I need to get a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> I feel like oh I boy. need one now, right? Like, is that is that the full like level of indoctrination? Which one? Like when yes. you buy a lightsaber? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, well, which, every which, fan which, I know has one. Yeah. Yeah. Which one though? I'm I'm a leaning towards eleventh because I just really like the design of it. I would say nope for eleven. You might want to get like one of those like either the high end ones or the or the, um, some fan made ones because I know the character option toy yeah. has gold plastic syndrome, oh, and God. that thing has a heavy that has a spring gimmick where yeah you co- that's I like so, the spring uh, gimmick. That's why I, like I want to do some research and get get a good one because I I mean I I bought a two hundred dollar lightsaber. I'm not afraid to like do it once, you know. Yeah. Um. So I recommend getting those high. Alistair Cromwell says get a laser screwdriver so you can really stand out. That sounds exciting. <laughs> so, you just, so you can just like revert everybody to like monkey age. <laughs> that'd be that'd be fun. Um oh what else is going on? Uh hey, you know I do videos. Did you guys know I do videos? Um that's the other thing we do on this channel. How's how's the how's the war start, how's your war journal going? <laughs> let's let's we'll take a look at that. Uh upcoming this week, guys. We talked about them literally a week ago. Hank and Janet already came out. Yeah, they're fat. That was like the fastest I ever seen has for releasing a figure. We literally last Monday we talked about the reveal of these two figures. I already have them. That was weird. Uh, they put them up on Tuesday. They said going up for pre order, and they were just in stock. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna get them. And they're yeah, there'll be a short on them tomorrow. Um, they're beautiful. I love them. Uh, it's really nice. They uh they did put up a pre order for like mid May, 
So there is like the next batch is coming in May. Um, Kyle says, get 12's first screwdriver because it's the same as 11's. So should fix the issue 11 where there's a button on the bottom to use the screwdriver when extended. Good to know. Uh, I will definitely be uh, looking into that stuff. Uh, as for shorts for Thursday, um, I've got, these just showed up in the mail. I got, I got Logan and Wolver and, uh, I almost said Logan and Wolverine. My ex uh, that, is melting. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be patch, wouldn't that be patch and Logan and? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, it's, uh, it's, it's Logan and Sabretooth, which I just forgot. His, I did not cancel his my biggest, Hasbro Pulse order. His good old, his <laughs> biggest hater. Hey, Biggest give away. <laughs> um, I my Hasbro Pulse orders for June, so I'm, I'm I, I got time. I can go cancel it before I end up buying a second. Um, anyways, I got him on GameStop because he was in stock at GameStop, and uh, I got that set, and I got the Lalandra, uh, and Brood Wolverine set. So these Which are gonna be, be on... shorts. I just don't know if there'll be one short for all four or if one short each. We'll see how it Let's... shakes out when I film. Ah, the two packs where you're mostly buying one one figure, <laughs> one figure. I would say <laughs> the two get... packs good because I li I like Cowboy Logan. So like I'm good there. It's just I didn't Lalandra. need Brood Wolverine. I just wanted to buy Lalandra, but I like the <laughs> hands for Brood Wolverine. The open hands. I can put those in my brown suit. Uh, mm -hmm. welcome to Sentai Ranger Donnie. Um. So yeah, these will be getting shorts. Uh, the reason I went through GameStop was one, they had the Saber Two set in stock, and then two, I had built up so many rewards points, I got twenty bucks off. Oh, nice! <laughs> and then guess what happened? That twenty oh, no. bucks off means it was under the free shipping limit. Oh, so oh. I bought this Jane Foster Thor keychain to get free shipping. <laughs> she was like the three bucks I needed to go over that's the sh free shipping. That's how that that's how they get <laughs> you, <works>. right? <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> it's a cute i was like they had like a bunch of these fun kill keychains i was like you know what jane foster thor i would i would get her so i got, <laughs> got a little jane thor keychain just to get free shipping um they qualified for free shipping then i put the discount like i put the discounts on and then they stopped qualifying yeah, that's that's how you do it yeah so it, it worked out uh i'm gonna go cancel this order though because i don't need this Hasbro pulse order because i uh i got it now cool um all right, yeah, we will talk about Star Trek stuff. Uh, Cameron Metters says, favorite Oswald moment. Anytime that Oswald the Lucky Rabbit rips off a limb and turns it into a tool is, like, the greatest thing ever. Good old two force powers. Yep. Uh, oh, speaking of videos, let's take a look at last week's videos. Uh, we had Metal Greymon and Amoeba War Stories. Yeah. They performed about the same, surprisingly. <laughs> I kind of expected one to do weaker than the other, and I thought Metal Greymon wouldn't do as well, but he did pretty decent. Mule War Stories was pretty good um, as well. Oh, man. That was nostalgic listening to those stories. Oh, I, yeah. I saw what was outside of that whole Amiibo thing. I got some Amiibos, but like I wasn't like a collector. I, I, I got so collect. many comments from some people that were like, oh, I never collected them. It's nice to hear the stories. And for some people that were like reliving their trauma with me. I just love the story, the show story the most. What yeah. did she literally like chuck it at you? Yes, she did. She actually threw Shulk at me, and I actually caught Not it. Really? But she nice. ate for my head. She was like, "I need this gone." It was. She was getting like. She was telling what? me. That I I kind of didn't <laughs> embellish in the video. I, she I was getting it. a call, like legitimately. She was getting a call like every three minutes, like all day. Oh wow! Really? It was that bad. Yeah. Because it was the only store that had a Shulk in the whole city. Also, Sentai Ranger, Sentai Ranger, who's this Nathan? I'm Ryan. I'm not sure who Nathan is. We have Ryan and Jerry, and then yeah. me, the mysterious sound out. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that was that. And then last week's shorts. Uh, guys, I think, I think X-Men's popular. <laughs> last week's shorts just popped off. Yeah, but did those do really well? I'm yeah, assuming. we got we got eight eight point five thousand views on part one of the wave and four point eight thousand on the second part. Like that, they just outperformed every short I've made in the last like three months. Oh, well, I didn't I didn't know Angel also has four point eight. <laughs> yeah, Angel's also. at four point eight. Guys, I think X Men's popular. <laughs> Um, we'll see, we'll see tomorrow, uh, how Hank and Janet do. I'm wondering if it's, if it's, if it's an X-Men thing or if it's just a Marvel Legends thing, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I, if you guys just see me do Marvel Legends shorts and like no other shorts, I mean, how I mean, <laughs> I mean, tell me, RNA just, RNA's happy is going to be, this be the, the rundown footage. <laughs> yeah, I may not use the, I, I've started this year. I'm not using the exact same footage for the rundown, but essentially like what I did today 
is I had a shot of Hank that was like a wide shot where you could see his whole body. And then I had a wider shot that I could crop into photo mode so that way you could still see his full body in the portrait mode style. So I just basically shot the same thing twice. And that's how I'm doing it. So I've already got the rundown footage for all these done. Um, I got some Transformers rundown footage to do as well. Uh, Cameron says, speaking of favorite X-Men theme, it's Wolverine and the X-Men. I love that theme song. It's it's perfectly X-Men. Sure. I think for me mm -hmm. it's the movie theme. I really love that movie theme. Oh, the uh, the uh, John Otley. Uh, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love I love the '90s theme. I do. I love the evolution oh, yeah. theme, but I think I like evolution. The okay. anime, the yeah. anime theme, the anime theme is really good. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, the anime one's actually good. Yeah. Yeah. I, all mm -hmm. the themes are good. It's like the shows. All the themes are good. Uh, the thing that I I like about um, Wolverine, the X Men themes over the other, and this will be our last topic before we move into the news. Um, the last thing that I, I, the thing I like about the Wolverine, the X-Men theme that the others don't have is that um, the other themes are like pulse pounding action, hype you up. You know, the anime theme is like the grand epic of X-Men, but the Wolverine, the X-Men theme has this hint of sadness and apathy oh, yeah. in it at the mm -hmm. beginning before the the X-Men show up because it's it's so staged beautifully with like the kids being taken away because they're mutants and sentinels showing up and that early like opening part just gives you like the feeling of like the fear and the sadness that mutants face every day before the X-Men show up to be the heroic thing to like counter it mm -hmm. but it's not like super upbeat it's like they're carrying like a grand, lot of weight like mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got like emotional weight on it, which is what I really, really also, like. Uh, uh, I mean, also, it, also, uh, it has Sea Bloom, the, the that weird Sea Bloom voice cry. The, yes, <laughs> yes, it does. Um, I would love, I would love a version of that theme to get released that doesn't have all the helicopter sounds in it too. I think also, uh, it's the most like probably my favorite like anime because um, most of, like evolution is just all cl clips yeah. besides like some new animation. Uh, I mean the the ninety seven the ninety two slash ninety seven is classic, but it has like that beautiful janky run animation. At the end. <laughs> I know, and I'm so glad they recreated it. Uh, MJ Klein, what's up? Am I late to the party? No, you're not, because we were just Spe getting started on the news. We were just on our little intro. X Men side tangent of the day. Uh, one more um, thing about the ninety two intro. Who yeah. is the pink and green guy in the Brotherhood side? Who is him? Animation he mistake. He's a literal animation <laughs> mistake. Larry Houston <laughs> okay. knows his knows his characters. He didn't put him in there. It's just like something got something got mixed up. Wait, that was a gag. That's a gag with me, me yeah. and my friend watching the series. Who is that pink and green guy in the front of the side? Yeah, exactly. It's it was like a, a straight up like the studio misinterpreted the model sheets when they went to animate okay. it. So uh, it was so just funny to look at. Oh, there's a beautiful video guy. You look it up. Mm. There's someone who recreated the ninety two slash ninety seven intro, but it's all stock footage. It's yeah. beautiful. Dr. Grid, we do not talk about the Pride of the X-Men theme. That doesn't exist to me. I like hey, X-Men, X-Men. Uh, all, right. all right, let's start with some bummer news, because like, today's news is pretty solid, you know? It only goes up from here. It only goes up from here. Yeah. Let's start with the MonsterVerse Blu-ray set uses AI art. <laughs> Yay. Um, shout out to Tyler Stone here, who posted, you know the reasons why so we had looked at this last week we had a low quality image last week and i was like that looks great sounds like a great set but uh, upon further inspection there's a lot of discussion about this as to some of it is ai generated some of it is ai filtered um this cover art for example there's like shapeless buildings growing out of a godzilla there's um oh, God. godzilla's tongue is growing out of the side of his mouth Ooh. which just looks rough uh, on the interior art, you're, like, lacking fine detail. It's just lines. Uh, the hairy hands with no distinct fingers on Kong here. It's just, like, it's just a ball of fur. <laughs> the, the worst one is probably what we'll happened to Scar King. We'll get to Scar King. <laughs> the nostrils being on one side of the face and everything. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then this like is... That. I don't get this. I don't want to hire designers. I'm like, look, AI's still bad. It still can't do it. Mm -hmm. And look at this. That's not even Scar King. That's some other dude. Yeah, it's not... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the shoulder bandolier is on the wrong side too of of the bones. Mm -hmm. It's over the shoulder as opposed to across the chest. And his chin, yeah, what? his chin's fused to his shoulder. It's <laughs> so as people have compared it, the cover, the the in the art here, like the uh, this part right here, this middle section, like when you first fold it out, that looks to be two renders from Godzilla versus Kong with like a 
shitty filter. AI uh, brush filter on top of filter, it. Filters upon filters. But the the interior art seems to be generated, and then the uh, the cover art is also generated or tweaked. It's it's like not if they great. didn't want like if they didn't want to pay artists, fine. But they have but here's Photoshop they have so exists. many. Well, also they have the all all the movies in the set have. Bunch of bunch of posters. Assets, yeah, they already yep. have assets. Like, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't just use a and There's hundreds of posters. Each Pre-made of these assets, yeah, yeah. They didn't need to do this. It's stupid. And uh, <laughs> Warner Brothers sucks. She goes outside. Um, oh, so see you I later, Satargos, a... Mr. Tanuki. We did miss X Men '97. We didn't get super deep, so I didn't want to do spoilers. You haven't missed Shadow, and uh, welcome in. I will. I will say this because I did saw saw one post some AI stuff on our Discord and I deleted. It. Please don't post any AI or Discord server. Yeah, it's uh, like the only AI stuff that I am okay with is, say for example, there's somebody on YouTube that's using an AI upscaler to bring the 1994 Fantastic Four movie from bootleg VHS up to 4K, and they're using like an AI upscaler to do that. That's fine. But when you have AI art that's AI replacing art things that humans can make, that's not fine. That's, that's where my fine line exists. Yeah. AI art, AI music, AI voices, ban. That's not allowed on our server. Yeah. The, and I mean, which is annoying because I hate now because I'm listening, you know, using YouTube, listening to music. Mm. I'm getting hate. I'm getting. I'm tired of every time I look at my the YouTube recommendations that we're looking for a next song to play. Yeah. There's so much AI music and art now. While looking mm. past it, like it's so annoying. Uh, anim- Anima Ge- Gemini says hi, everyone. Just start watching this AR. It makes me sick. I agree with you. Thank you. Um, welcome to uh the viewing. I know this is our. I put this up front so we could just you know move on. I do think there was this article about like how Amazon's like uh cashierless stores were using an AI program to check you out, and it turns out it was like a group of a hundred people in India doing it, like monitoring things well, over a camera instead. Well, that's the thing is like, there's a difference between like, you know, cause I AI, th- I, I think a lot of what we've been, what has been labeled as AI isn't actually artificial intelligence. Well, no, 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 no because I, no, yeah. I saw a video of a YouTuber I watched, um, reviewing a rice cooker that has AI. It says that they have AI technology in it. And all it is, it's just a computer. It's the, it, they're just using it as a fancy word because it's such a buzzword now. It yeah, because because it, it the is a AI, buzzword for sure. Yeah, yeah, because the AI in that rice cooker is just mm. the usual like sonic toothbrushes would be called AI toothbrushes now. Yeah, it's because yeah. I mean, the artificial intelligence been a thing since year you know, since like the dawn of like technology, but it just but the term A but now companies are using the term mm. actual term AI everywhere as a buzzword to make people buy their products now. It's getting ridiculous. It is getting insane so i personally speaking i'm not buying that blu-ray set i was going to i had it on order canceled my order uh, if they change the art cool i mean i've seen that happen before art has been changed but uh it's warner brothers so you guys think they care <laughs> i don't know what's the over and under on warner brothers caring anymore right, right. Um, yeah uh logic blast bring us a good point generative ai is ruining a lot of AI, uh, google searches where you're looking for real stuff and you're getting ai junk and stuff yep yeah, I'm I hate that. that. Issue too. I, I, I've been cool. Yes, I, me too. I'm like, I don't even. I'm just looking at simple stuff for work, mm. and I'm getting AI generated answers. Like, I don't want that. I want the actual answer. Oh, Why do I have a red spot on my nose? What the heck happened here? <laughs> you, you got bitten by a radioactive spider. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, yeah. Oh God, Ghost Strange. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. a thing I also <laughs> don't like. Uh, Ghost Strange says I'm in an Adobe class and AI is everywhere now. I know Adobe put AI like stuff, like generative AI stuff, into their programs, and it's it doesn't work. Like they're like generative AI remove a background from an image, and I'm like, it didn't work. It took out half of what I wanted, so like it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. Mr. Dookie says the other problem with AI is not actually artificial intelligence. The algorithms just make things up, like those attorneys who keep getting in trouble for all those AI citing fake cases. Yeah, I mean. Maybe we maybe oh, we've read yeah, it wrong. Maybe it's not AI. Maybe it's Al for algorithm. Yeah. Algorithm. Mm. Yeah, algorithm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we'll see how that all shakes out. But uh, weirdly enough, the only other Blu-ray news I got is Warner Brothers. So we're just gonna pivot to they finally released Superman and Lois season three uh, on Blu-ray yeah, coming out in June. Fine. 
This show, Violet. this season He's finished like airing in like remember. March of 2023. Yep, I saw the finale <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I know season four is still coming up, but like, uh-huh. this is, why did this take so long? <laughs> At least I this know, poster right? was made by a human because it was made like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was, the, that was the season poster when it came out. <laughs> that was the season poster uh, two years ago. If I um, so if I agree to Al, because yeah. this season was great, I love this season. The show's so good. good. People watch it. <laughs> I haven't seen season two onward because I I I was like dragging. I don't know. I was I stopped having cable and then I stopped doing stuff and I was like I should catch up on you it. Could, and they're like it's ending, could, so I'm gonna wait till it's over and so I haven't gone back to it yet. Well, you could just watch the CW ad, uh, site such as I know, but I don't ads. Like ads. I I have HBO Max right now. I'm like two on three bucks a month, but it's ad supported. They gave me an ad two minutes into Doom Patrol, and I'm like, ugh, I hate this. Just let me watch the show. Um, Corey Robinson asked, do you completely use AI for one of your projects in class? That sucks. That's where that's where things are going to get rough. Is well, that's like, gonna, that's going to be, we are forced yeah. to use AI. Kind of yeah. like the problem of, like, Disney was like, we want to do 2D animation for our Tiana Disney Plus show. What do you mean none of the artists we've hired learn 2D animation? Like, it's just they stop teaching it in, in college. They just only would teach 3D. Crazy. In Japan, they do. But yeah. Here. A lot of 2D, 2D animators. We don't do that no more. A lot of 2D animators nowadays, I hear, are just in fully, they taught themselves. Yep. They taught themselves. That's and a lot I of mean, them yeah. used Flash to do it. Yep. Yeah. Um. Speaking of things that are 2D animated, yeah. Scooby Doo right. on Zombie Island uh, is a movie that people love. Right, and Scooby Doo Return train. to Zombie Go, Island like, is a movie like, that people don't. <laughs> Ghost Train. I don't know what you're talking about. Lobo's not Superman. Lobo. Oh uh, no, Lobo, Lobo was in Krypton. That's a different show. Yeah, yeah, that's a different. Yeah, super, I love yeah that's ridiculous. Uh, I need more shows like Krypton. Anyways, I um, remember Krypton was great. Yeah. I I love the idea of like, hey, let's just set it on Krypton, but like not make yeah. it Sorry. about Jor El. Yes. So it's just like you get to explore uh-huh. the planet and its mythos. And they were like, yeah, and we figured out how to write. Brainiac in here, and Lobo's been around a while, right? So why isn't he in this? And they ended it with a dark side tease. And Sci-Fi canceled it. Uh, mm-hmm. They're also going to give a Lobo a spin-off show, too. That was... It was all going to be That's a thing that came crashing down. Uh, Lobo keeps... They, they always keep, they always keep to do, give Lobo stuff. They always keep canceling it. Yep. <laughs> so the funny part about this is that when this got announced, people were like, oh, I have to buy Zombie I- or Return to Zombie Island. Well, yeah, but also the bundle is thirty. Is uh, sorry, I read the free shipping. It's fifteen dollars. You're not paying for Return to Zombie Island. It's Thank just God, <laughs> that movie's. I've seen that movie. That movie's bad. Yeah, like you're. <laughs> if you want Zombie Island, you get Return free. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, it's a coaster. <laughs> yeah, might as well. unless it's on the same disc, which I probably on the yeah. same disc. They probably put yeah, it probably. Yeah. Um, I was like, because I'm, not, I'm on definitely this. printing out a custom cover for this one. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> uh, what else? There was somebody else that had something in the chat I wanted to read. Where was it? Oh, Jeremy Carr says, I learned manual photography in school, and then I wanted, when I got out, they wanted digital art all all the places I applied. Yeah, that happens. Uh, I know that feel. Right after I graduated with my graphic mm-hmm. design. That happened to me with my stuff, too. They were like, you need to have this skill. And I'm like, I just graduated. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Why haven't you found a job in graphic design? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. Ask the industry, right? Yeah. Uh, we've got some, we got some interesting entertainment news, guys. We really do. I'm, I'm loading it all up so we can talk about it. Um, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. But, uh, I think, I think that's all we got on, I don't know. Blu ray news has been quiet lately, it feels. But I got a big boom, like, a couple, last couple of weeks. So it's yeah, slowing so down. It's kind of like slowing. We're in the, the down sphere. Mr. Tadouki, you, know I mean? you mean you don't have 15 years experience for an entry-level position? Yeah, I know, I hate that so <laughs> much. Every <laughs> time I see that. Yep. All right. You need this entry level, but you need this many years. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Entertainment news. Uh, welcome, Toma. Sandland, the series, uh, has been available with an English dub in most international regions since the show right. launched. The dub has caught up. For yeah, some reason, day, if you're it's in the it's U.S. and Canada... Dub. You only get seven episodes now that they served up, and then episode uh, eight will come out Wednesday. And I guess the rest will come out Wednesdays after. But the dub is now available in uh, North America, finally. I don't know only why on this Hulu. took so long. But only on Hulu. Only you can't on... access it through a Disney Plus version. Yep. If you have T-Mobile, yep. go get your Hulu. <laughs> Psycho says the only person that has that experience 
that passes their age as Ash from Pokemon. <laughs> hey, you know what? Tokyo Texas cosplay. I'm going to move this up right for you just now. We're going to talk about Ultraman Arc right now. <laughs> All right. Since I I know he's got he's got he's got to step out a certain time. Let's just talk about it right now. All right. So, uh, Ultraman Arc latest update uh, is basically, hey, this dude got toys. I mean weapons. Um, here we go. So we got the Ultraman Arc Sword. Oh, um, uh, Tomo uh, sent a super chat saying, uh, yay, Ultraman Arc. Yeah. Um, uh, Tokyo Tex Class plays happy. All right. So Ultraman Arc's got a cool new sword. Uh, this Joy is... Finally, the trilogy is complete. We got, what, the, the Sunglass Sword from Ghosts, the Sunglass Sword from Dawn Butters, and now the Sunglass we Sword complete... from Ultraman. <laughs> Ultraman. Complete <Yep>. the trilogy. <laughs> Uh, the Arc Eye Sword is an invincible sword. I'm sure it'll break at some point in the show because drama. Um, <laughs> it's also interesting because he can use the Arc Sword beam by inserting an Arc Cube into it. Uh, so it's going to have a beam attack out of his sword, which is pretty rad. Forehead um, beam. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It looks really cool. Uh, I like so the design a lot. Adding to that, uh, his first form change will be the Solus Armor, the Armor of the Sun. So like Ultraman X, he's going to have armors as opposed to form uh, or type changes. So, I think this looks really cool, because I, I like the idea of Ultraman just wearing armor instead of, like, having full type changes, um, mm. and I think this looks, looks really cool. I also think that it does look like it was dreamed up in a kid's imagination, which fits the theme. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the what do you guys think of the... Solus armor? I think Solus armor looks neat. Love the boxer look it has. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is definitely, like, our, our heavy muscular type uh, mm -hmm. form. Because they always kind of tend to You're... do, like, the balanced... Uh, speed, strong speed and, balance. Yeah, yeah, strong speed balance, yeah. And speaking of speed, the Luna armor, the armor of the moon, is uh, the speed type, I think. And, how ironic uh, right, this, right, this, this, this news was released during the week of the eclipse. Yeah, I know. This was the, yeah, I think they almost knew. They are like, oh, that eclipse coming up. We should, uh, we should drop this news of a, of a sun and a moon themed armor. Which also gives me Cosmos vibes. Which is mm -hmm. pretty yep. rad. I um, guess. <laughs> yeah, Cosmos has a Luna and Corona. Oh, uh, Toma gave give it one member, and Jeremy Carr was given the membership. Thank you, Toma. Welcome, Jeremy Carr. Um, good times. Thanks for gifting membership. Uh, as a member, Jeremy Carr, if you're here, I don't know if you are, but if you're here, you can join He's us here. as a member after show today. Um, anyways, yeah, so I think these forms look cool. I think the sword particularly looks just awesome. Uh, mm, I, I really love do it. dig I think it. the Luna armor is going to ha have, like, a uh, Boosters or something? Yeah, he's kind no, of he's, you know, he's like a flight form. He has little wings, he has yeah. little right? And he's got one of those like shield disc arm things, like a uh, like a uh, Don, like Don dragon Toradoku. shitty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Too. <laughs> Anything in Saint Seiya? Oh yeah, Saint Seiya. That's a thing that I forget <laughs> about. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's it for Ultraman Arc. Uh, that was that was pretty much the news. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ghost Strange says I'm watching this like a like a character that has a sun and moon theme like Rex Goodwin in Five Ds. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Psychoos has twelve Ranger keys left to get. Please send help, guys. Send Psychoos help. He's really close to the uh, end uh, of his uh, collection. Ash, uh, Ash, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Jeremy Carr is here and excited. All right. Next story. Uh, at CinemaCon, there was some announcements made that I didn't feel like were newsworthy because they're just kind of like, we're doing that. But this one actually got trade press. Monarch Legacy of Monsters has been renewed for a second season by Apple TV+. And they're planning multiple spinoffs, which is I'm exciting because I love Monarch. Yeah, I'm glad to hear because not Monarch's good, but that shows that it was successful. I yeah. was worried because it was not the major streaming platforms that... It wouldn't like only be once. Oh, Jamie hey, World Jamie's gifted one World membership. Gifted membership and it went to Infinite, Infinite. 1985. Thank you, Jamie's World. Ooh. And welcome to your membership, Infinite. Uh, this is why I love doing the, the live streams being, uh, you know, after the streams. <laughs> um, I thought Monarch was great because I am, I, I love character driven stuff. And I think that the MonsterVerse has had a bit of a weaker human cast problem in a lot of movies. So I think true. it was nice to yeah. build them out into a show. And I think this, like, the the connections between all the different things that have happened and kind of filling out the timeline has been great. Uh, and then adding to that, the fact that they're, like, they're gung-ho enough that they're like, let's do multiple spinoffs, I think is going to be um, pretty awesome. So I'm looking forward to more Monarch, and it will get me to sub to Apple TV Plus for at least a month at a time, just to, 
you know, pop in and watch it and leave. <laughs> but it's a le- yeah. and it's a weekly series also. Which is I nice. do think <laughs> they did. They I do think just like uh, like we saw before, everything renewal wise was put on hold to see how New Empire did, and because that did really well, they're going to continue moving forward with it. Um, the MonsterVerse kind of lives and dies by its movies, essentially. So I mean, it got what forty million from <laughs> the Empire. <laughs> yeah, they because they are almost at five hundred million, I think. It's I mean, doing well. Yet, so it's doing very well. <laughs> yep. All right. Now for the biggest, like, two-punch headline that I've ever seen. Star Trek Strange New Worlds has been renewed for season four. Yay! Star Trek Lower Decks is ending with season five. Aww. <laughs> uh, uh, you... Lower Decks being a comedy series, it could have run forever. And I kind of wish it had. But but then you then you realize, look at every other animated project out there nowadays. It, it's... It's Actually, outlasted nice. like so many of them. Oh, so many, it lasted more than three seasons. Yep, <laughs> it kind of. It's funny this this article makes it look like Pike just told a really mean joke, and Mariner's not sure what she thinks, and Boimler's <laughs> like, "Did Pike just say that?" Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing is, this is. I think my only problem with this news. I'm not like shocked that Lower Decks is ending with season five, but much like we we've had Discovery and is ending right now. It's in its last season. Picard ended last year. Lower Decks is, is ending this Prodigy year. Got, Prodigy got ending this year after being saved by Netflix. That leaves Strange New Worlds is the only show. <laughs> I remember when Paramount Plus was advertised as the home of Star Trek? Yes. Um, so the thing is, we're at the point we went from five shows to one. The Starfleet Academy show's in pre-production and they're set building right now and they're casting, so that's like coming up and going. And that's taking place in Discovery's point in the timeline, so that's kind of like a Discovery spinoff in a lot of ways. Um, But, yeah, it's just like, it's nice that they got their five seasons. The one thing I hope we get is two posters for season five, one based on Star Trek V and one based on Star Trek VI, because I really want to complete that set that they, they put out. Because like each season has had a poster based on an original series Star Trek movie, um, yeah. Dale Coma says, "I know there are petitions trying to save Lower Decks, but I can't see them getting the same traction the fandom getting how long it lasted." Yeah, it's like we got fifty episodes. We got, you know, we got. They had a good five run. Seasons. It's a good run. Again, yeah, and again, they and the characters other... did get promoted last season, so they're it's again. Yeah, especially compared to other animated programs out right now. Ugh. And the uh, the joke was made. Uh, Mike McMahon walking in the Paramount office on Monday pitching Star Trek Middle Decks. <laughs> <laughs> I, that'd be hilarious if that happened. Um, Mr. Tanuki says, still going to order Lower Decks on Blu-ray. Hoping the last season still gets a Blu-ray. I think it will. Uh, they're they're pretty consistent at this point. Season 4 comes out tomorrow, actually. So, um, Yeah, I, I loved Lower Decks. It was my jam. It was up my alley. Uh, it took a while to get used to it, but it was... I love it. But... Again, five seasons is not bad. It's not like Prodigy where they ripped it away mid-production on a season. That was worse. Um, but the question is, are we going to get a new animated Star Trek show to replace it, essentially? Right? Who knows? Paramount really hates animation right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, the biggest problem I have. A Star Trek upper deck trading cards. That'd be great. Um, I think that's... You can watch Lower Decks on Paramount Plus, Jamie, as well. Um, so the thing is that I think the problem I have is that like shows keep ending. Well, and I'm not uh, wait, uh, getting wait, a remember, is Paramount Plus available in the UK? Because I think yeah, it was, is. Uh, I think it moved over okay. there. If it's not there, it's on Prime Video. It's one of the others. Um, Infinite says, "Imagine Star Trek Janeway." Yeah, I could imagine that because I don't think they're going to make it. Uh, it's very clear Paramount's been curbing back spending because their money's not good. Um, so mm-hmm. the thing I is is that we got Strange New Worlds, we got Starfleet Academy. The the Section Thirty One movie's been filmed and that's coming out. I would like to see another animated movie, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I don't think it's like doom and gloom for Star Trek. I think Star Trek will persist. I just, I think a lot of us in the fandom were saying it it can't be sustainable to do five shows all the time, and I knew that was the case. It's just always kind of a, a sad just to see it. Well, like it's, it's kind of it's just that, it's just that, you know it's at the end, and that's fine. You know, I think the thing is, I think having. One uh, one live action show, one adult animated animated aim uh, animated show, one for kids was a good idea. It just Paramount yeah. was bad at it, dumb planning it. Yep, Paramount's just not good at stuff. But um, 
Yeah, Toyota Kobo says, I think that Paramount's going to cut Paramount Plus in general. There's been talk of them merging with another streaming service, and I think that's likely. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting how they roll up a lot of their Paramount Plus original mm-hmm. Nickelodeon shows, and yeah. I won't be surprised. Especially since I think, like, even stuff like the. Um, like, they still do a lot of Netflix exclusives, because I think that, that the leak mm. was, was leaked, but that uh, SpongeBob Sandy Cheeks movie, that was going to be a Netflix exclusive, not a Paramount exclusive. Yeah. So. I won't be surprised if they're going to merge with Netflix because they already have a lot of content on Netflix already. So, like, mm. I won't be surprised. I do think that, uh, I do think it's weird that they, I, you know, if I was Paramount, I'd just renew Strange New Worlds for season five right now and just roll roll into it and give them, like, a, hey, you get, you're get getting five seasons, like Discovery and Lower Decks got, and then they could just do something grand with it. Um, but since Strange New World is the most popular show they of, yeah. the, of the current era. It is. Oh yeah, Knuckles shows out soon. I almost forgot. Next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 11 days? Yeah. It's the 26th, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I yep. think Knuckles will get a Blu-ray as well. Paramount has not locked any of their home media, streaming only. Their, ho- their home their media... Franchises. Yeah. There's one good thing about Paramount is their home media stuff is actually Even really that, good. that Grease show they, they did a tax write-off on got a dvd <laughs> so like yeah it's kind of crazy their whole um, main division is like really good surprisingly yeah. uh it's good to go to brings up like the movie thing like there there was there they keep trying to do star trek movies but the problem they made and i, I it's, it's a self-inflicted problem shows like strange new worlds and discovery and picard are shot sh- shot so cinematically how could you make a movie feel different is that the problem? That's gonna be the, like the problem with the Mando movie, especially. Right. For like I don't know how the Mando movie is gonna look any different than the. It, like they have to bump it up, but like Star Trek already looks so good on on streaming TV. I don't know how you can make it. You how you can make a movie and then make it better looking somehow, and then you know be like go out and see this instead of staying at home. It's yeah. I think it's why like streaming movies like Section Thirty One is like the smart move, um, unless they scale back like Star Trek. Kind of like how, because like the reason why the movies worked in like the 80s and 90s was because like you had the TNG movies airing at the same time as DS9 and Voyager, but nothing in those two shows could compete with the big movie budgets. And that was what made them different. But now there isn't uh, much to it. Uh, um, Infinite says best oh, rival, uh, Knuckles, Silver, or Shadow? Uh, as a rival, for me, is still, I mean, my ultimate rival would be. Tie between if you go like just games alone, mm-hmm. metal, but you want to go by comics, uh, Surge, Surge, I think Surge is the best is rival. I think, uh, I think, Sonic's out of the best street, rival. what do you think? Give me out of the answer. street, Shadow, um, Shadow. I don't really view Knuckles as a rival anymore, they just more butt heads. Yeah, I think uh, it's Shadow, also, too. Uh, you, here's a question, uh, where's my Shadow? Where's where's Shadow? Hey, well, de- here's well, well, Shadow. <laughs> Well, no, technically, your shadow's below you. That's true. You know, like a tech. Hey, <laughs> also, look. Uh, slightly... Our shadow is slightly to the... <laughs> uh, so, uh, also, slightly, slightly on topic, but I guess... Uh, I, I think yeah. Crunchyroll's probably pushing their Blu-ray stuff, because they announced a bunch of Blu-rays today. Like, a bunch of Blu-rays today for Crunchy. I think there's Sony... The Sony... What was this... it the whole Sony... Oh, yeah, that Sony thing? merger thing, where, like, Crunchyroll Home Video and Sony Home Video are merging. I think, yeah, they yeah. did announce a lot of home video stuff. I will uh, take just a look at those. An hour. No, uh, not, I, I'm looking at you. Not a lot of shows you don't recognize. Cool. So Chainsaw say, Man still just... hasn't popped up yet? Oh, no, they already got announced a while ago. They, yeah, they it didn't got get announced. a date. It didn't get a solicitation. I didn't see it. Don't see a date right now, but uh, I don't see a date. So, but yeah. I'm wondering nice. what happened with Chainsaw Man because they 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 showed the Blu-ray cover and everything, but then like didn't give us a date or or release info. Mm. But so it was just nice to see that uh, they are mm. just uh, pushing a bunch of Blu-rays right now. That's, That's nice good because I don't think because Discotech for being how much smaller they are than Crunchyroll shouldn't be outpacing them in discs because they just announced right. how many, they just announced like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight One Piece uh, Blu-ray because I know they're all behind, behind. Like they're yeah. not even. I know because it dumps like only thirty episodes behind now on the digital release. Yeah, but in terms of home media, they they, they were even at Wano again and um the the home media. So it looks like they're mm. now they're fully catching. It looks like they're doing the whole Cake Island arc. Um, cool. We've seen it by the looks of it. So that's nice to see. He's back to this. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, Ted Theodore Logan himself, Keanu Reeves, uh, Neo. 
the chosen one, Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, the Johnny Silverhand yeah. in my life. Um, what else are we going to do? Excellent. It's great. I mean, Keanu, Keanu <laughs> is one of those guys who will commit to a role. He's a good voice actor. I think he's going to Yeah, he's a good voice actor. I, 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 see, I see people like still want Hayden Christian, and I think Hayden could have been a good Shadow, but you know like... You I want Hayden Christensen to play instead? Who? Silver. <laughs> I, I see Fitz with more higher pitched voice, but um, I, I think, but no, he, I think Silver as Hayden Christensen would be great because Hayden can carry so much weight in his voice, and Silver's yeah. got the whole time travel thing going on. Yeah, but, uh, but he, I don't think Hayden done voice acting that much at all. He hasn't. If none, he's not much of a versus voice Keanu, actor. versus Keanu who has done several voice acting gigs. Yes. I mean, like like. Hell, going back to back in the eight, the nineties with the t- Bill and Ted animated series. Yeah, his first voice acting gig was the Bill and Ted animated series. Um, Alistair Cromwell, that's a good point. I'm starting to get worried for the longevity of Sonic Live action movies. Big name actors keep getting attached. I will say that in terms of big name actors, like we all know Idris Elba and Keanu Reeves, but like Keanu outside of John Wick hasn't had like massive box office success and idris has never had massive box office success so they're still affordable like they're still they're like, popular they're, they're popular actors but yeah. not like they're like they're popular actors but like they're like they're just they it's, like, like, the it's like if said. they got ryan gosling to play sbo it's like they could afford him <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like it's not like yeah. big big actors and also like can't like yeah, like Keanu reeves is very so much like nicholas cage where they will just do movies they want yep. to do kind of film people the, the, so like, I, I call it the Samuel L. Jackson type of actor. The, we'll do whatever they want to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I think, um, and Alistair, that's a good point. Eggman, Jim Carrey going forward. I think we're going to see Eggman one more time in this third movie, and then we're just going to get new villains. And I think mm-hmm. that's totally fine. I think we don't need... We have don't, eight, don't worry, we, we have Agent Stone. We still have our good old pal Agent Stone still. <laughs> yep. Agent Stone, yeah, he'll be... But you know what's funny, though, is that Idris and Keanu were both in Cyberpunk, and now Idris and Keanu are both in Sonic 3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's great. It's a good headline, too. This will get a lot of attention for the movie. Uh, I'm excited. I'm happy. <laughs> uh, and it's also the good part, too, is it's not like Mario, where, like, Mario's cast is all A-list actors. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that's it's not... not... A, that's not sustainable. <laughs> I mean, the fact, also, like, the fact that they still keep Colin O'Shaughnessy see as tails so yeah. still like the ultimate like that's a great seat to see they're they're move. not casting for the celebrity they're casting for the character yeah that's they the think best Keanu part. can do a good job at their voice that his they think Keanu can do a good job for their version of shadow just like Idris because like Idris's knuckles is not the same as as video game knuckles they're not the same personality so they do need to have a different voice same with Sonic tails is basically mm-hmm. the same so it's fine so mm-hmm yeah, this movie's gonna make all the money, guys. I just, I really have a good feeling about this one. <laughs> How does I, Sonic I, I do, Three not just blow everybody's mind at this point? I do love all because that same icon they showcase like a not really a trailer but like a scissor. They showed a, like a, like a scissor real clip, yeah. Yeah, and I love all the people going like sneaky. It's like breaking. It's like showcasing gameplay of SA Two Eggman breaking into prison. It's like people sneaking into Paramount, yeah. like breaking the break Paramount to get that trailer footage. We did get confirmed, Fat Eggman. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> yep. I'm excited. Jerry, are you excited about Keanu with Shadow? Actually, I am. Because the you guys know, mentioned about him being a good voice actor, because, you know, mm. just because they're famous doesn't mean they're good, but he actually is, so, you know. Now, yeah. now, now yeah. I want Alex Winter as Omega. That would be fun. That would be really <laughs> fun. Alex Winter would be so down for that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, and then our last piece of entertainment news, the uh, Decca Ranger 20th Fireball Booster movie has a new poster and a new trailer. We finally got some, like, context for what's going on, and we now Air understand time. why the D-Sword Vega Memorial Edition happened. Every time I hear that title, I keep expecting to be, like, those ridiculous game fighting titles, like, Decca Ranger Fire Blast Special Maxi Boost Extreme Versus. Yeah. <laughs> It was, I think it's because the first episode was called, like, Fireball Starter or something like that. Because, like, Bond yeah. is a fireball. So it's, like, Fireball Booster because it's going even more hardcore. Uh, there's a new one-minute trailer out. It looks great. Everybody's back. Decca Ranger Robo is back, which shocked the heck out of me. Because usually they these anniversary afford. movies don't do <laughs> mecha fights. They can afford it. Gokaiger <laughs> didn't. Uh, I know Goanger did. And they made, like, some crazy new combination where they were using, like, uh, Jetsras and Tordipter as, as, as boots. 
Um, I forget. Um, yeah. I forget. Is this a V Cinema or in theaters movie? Uh, v Cinema next. So it's in theaters for a limited time and then will be released on digital shortly after. I guess it's one of those. Decor- so we should see this in like June? I guess because yeah. Decorator is so popular that they can afford to do mm. uh, mecha fights. I think so. I mean, I've already bought, you know. I've already ordered two memorial licenses and a sword, so like, of course, I think you know that just. Dang, it also also makes me wonder, yeah. like, is the reason why I don't get much mech fights is uh, due to the condition of the suits kind of scenario? Also, mm. I think, um, I think, yeah, it's it's a lot of condition of the suits. They just remade the Decker Ranger Robo suit though for some like Go Kaiger stuff. I think it they they mm. made a new suit for Decker Ranger Robo recently, and that's so that's why they have it. Um, Psychos did bring up, yeah, Decker Tenth had a Decker Ranger Robo stock footage but it was a sock footage fight. This one looked like new, because, like, Murphy was popping up in front of Decker Ranger Robo. So I was like, that's definitely new. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I don't have any other thoughts besides... I hope I hope Guy in Orange here isn't evil, because I'm tired of that trope. <laughs> that's all I got. I just... I hope he's not evil, because we did that with Decker Ranger Tent, and we did it with, with Decker Ranger vs. Gavin. So... Um, Zen Kaiger's mech fight for its versus movie was CG. So, yeah, but didn't they re- didn't they have but the, didn't Stacy summon the old mechas to oh, fight? Yeah, the... did Stacy summon Decker Ranger Robo? I think he did. I know there was uh, he summoned quite a few. Yeah, I'm also remembering. Remember when they used the Ranger keys? Uh, because they they made some mecha suits for Go Kaiger 199 for that mecha and, battle. Uh, they versus... used some suits and then they used a bunch of uh. Also, uh, go, don't yeah. forget go uh, go Kai versus go buster uh, go buster. Also, right. have to... uh, looking at it, yeah, it was in 199 heroes, and it was one of the copies in Zen Kaiger that Stacy mm. summoned. So they probably rebuilt it for 199, and then they had it around since, and they just kept care of it better. That's a Ranger Donnie. I'm cautious about the Section 31 movie, though. Yet, whatever or not, I would give a cat a go. A go, maybe up to me. Uh, though I'm more interested in Star Trek. What's Star Trek Legacy? Star Trek Legacy is a show that doesn't exist. Oh. <laughs> uh, Star Trek Legacy is a pitch for a continuation of Picard with Captain Seven of Nine and, and all of them and, and kind of like the legacy of Star Trek. But it has not been greenlit. There is no work on it being done. It is an idea. Everybody at Paramount that works in the creative side is like, sure, we should do it. But it comes down to budget so, because it's, it's a lot but... more expensive than doing uh anything else but but it is that like a thing they want to do not like a fan idea okay yeah there's a thing they want to do and there's a petition for it but like it has not been greenlit it's not a thing happening yet um so yeah infinite says worst sentai mecha design in the history of the series uh, uh, oh god mm. that's that's too painful for me to tackle right now that's, a, that's his own tier list <laughs> ask me again in the ama and i'll, I'll have a better answer <laughs> I, I do not have the, the God, that Sentai Time. Mecha stuff I love too much, and so it just... Alright! You guys ready for some Transformers news? Transformers! Transformers! So we're looking at uh, Masterpiece Genrai from Super God Master Force. Um, or Power Master Aquas Prime, leader, greatest leader of all time! Uh, welcome to the chat, T. Cosmic Latte. <laughs> Um, yeah, Power Master Up is Prime Gaze Leader of our time. Here he is. So here's his truck mode. Here's the base robot mode after you put the, uh, the God master. Power, power master, God Master, whatever. He's got blast effects that look like the, they're trying to be robot Damashi anime effects, but they're, they're not as good. They look like, uh, they look like Artie, those little Artie? balls you fill with water to, to water your plants slowly. I think cause it, oh, it, yeah. I think I think those are the same ones that MP Megatron came with. It just looks like molded a different color. Yeah. So you can buy just this, just the cab with the Godmaster and the two blast effects and the two blasters. Uh you can also uh, he transforms obviously from you know that to that. It's it's what we expect from Masterpiece. But then of course you're probably like, what about Super Genrai? Also- he also has uh, has the ability to what change his eyes to be either anime or toy color, right? We'll talk about that in a moment. So if you want the full package, there is a separate release. Mine is, well, mine is God Bomber. Mine is <laughs> so God Bomber. The yeah, they're gonna package. have to make that separate, or they won't because they never made Victory Leo. Victory Leo. Yeah. Um, if you want the full trailer and you want the full package, Super Gen Rai, that is also available. We got the base mode here. It's got you know articulation to do crazy poses. He can punch. 
He combines. There he is. Look at all the stuff this set comes with. It comes with a whole lot more. You get like a smaller figure of Jinrai that's posed. You get anime like more... colored eyes. You get you get the blue eyes. You get the red eyes. You get lightning yeah, like, effects. Like tons, one tons gen, one God Master Jin, one God Master Jinrai is meant to just combine to with Jin, uh, the rope, the cat, and one's like actual normal proportion Jinrai and the yep. suit. And uh, yeah, so he's got all that stuff going on. I do love the rainbow rainbow lightning. I do love the rainbow lightning because mm -hmm. that is very accurate to the anime. I'm a huge Super God Master Force fan, so seeing this it's is one of the, it's really good. God, no, it, it, it is the most mm -hmm. mecha anime of the of the of of the eighties of the Dakaro anime series. Like, uh, so. <laughs> uh, so but adding to this, uh, to 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 show the difference between the two. The Masterpiece 60 Jinrai, this one here, the cab only, is the toy colors. And he comes with stickers if you want to make the Super Jinrai, which is MPG-09. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, into toy colors, you use the stickers from the single cab Jinrai. So most people, I think, would just buy the Super Jinrai, like, outright. You know, Complete package, yeah. Complete package kind of thing. Now, the fun part. The price. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Jinrai on his own. Just just the just the main figure plus the Godmaster. 18,078 yen or approximately 120 US dollars. If you <laughs> want the super Jinrai with all the stuff, it's 39,017 yen oh, or 258 like... US dollars. <laughs> oh. Now <laughs> Ryan, you're a Super God Master Force oh, fan. This looks great, right? Yes, it does. Uh, he looks very it, anime accurate. Sort of. I mean, for depending, like most animes back in the day, depends on the animator. <laughs> you know what I got to say about this? You guys want to know my opinion on this? And yeah, I, this is to not discredit anybody's enjoyment of it. I don't like it at all. I don't like the way it looks yeah. at all. And I know I, it's I'm like angle accurate and stuff and all that. Like, that's fine. I just don't well, like it. I don't like the way That's it looks. the thing. Because I imagine what this is, is using the model sheet as reference. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, that's the thing with, well, most 80s productions. No matter cartoon or or mm. anime or well, they get sometimes the same because they use Japanese videos. Is It really depends on the animator. Never forget Obari Optimus. Exactly. Yeah. Never forget Obari Optimus. <laughs> Yeah, um, Jinrai yeah. here looks boxy and cubey because that's probably what the Malshi looks like. But then some episodes will be animated by a different animator to make him look more super robot muscle mecha man. Bung, 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 bung. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so that's always there the is problem. No, with... There is no die cast uh, in that Jeremy Carr. They don't do that with Masterpiece anymore. Yeah, so... That, so... That, that's always the problem with... Um, with I even the with victory saber with sa victory saber because you know there's definitely shots of where star saber has a tiny chest oh, yeah. <laughs> a tiny chest of giant legs for example and then it so also has always, to transform which is not an easy yeah. thing to pull off so they so they I'm not surprised because and this is my problem with this is the reason why I don't like masterpiece that much anymore mm -hmm. is I don't like how slavish they are to the animation design because something it just can't work it like doesn't. This. Like, yeah, this cause... feels like, I think it looks, I think it, like, design-wise and trying to match the anime, fine. I just don't like the way he looks in the anime either. I like, I like, uh, this design. As, as I'm going to an eBay listing instead of the actual tab. There you go. I like this. I like the way he looked in the comics, where he was just, like, well, beefed up off of his pride. <laughs> here's the thing, though. It, yeah. There is... But here's the thing, there is some episodes of Master Force where he does just look like a beef of Optimus, and that's some of my favorite shots in Master Force. One of my biggest of problems Master with the Masterpiece. Force. What is up with the feet? They're like mm -hmm. the covers over the feet. I don't like it. I like the way that the comic interpreted it, where the feet are just large. That's me. I really like this. I like this design. I don't really like the way the Masterpiece looks. It's not to say that it's wrong. Or bad. It's just I I just don't like it stylistically speaking. So that's that's my thing. You know, I think it looks one of those subjective art. Yeah, I, I get subjective you. art things, right? Like I yeah, think for what the masterpiece is is working to accomplish, I think that it does that well. Like, hold on, like I'm gonna get some screen grabs. I just uh, don't like it. <laughs> that's <laughs> how it is. I get you. you know what I mean? I'll, I'll go get. Let me go get. Some Yo, screen it's the meme. 
this is brilliant, but I like this. Exactly. Let, yeah, this is like, brilliant, think, but but I like this. I'm gonna put these in our stream <laughs> chat so you can put up sound out. But like, right. just here's like two different frames on Jin Ryan for the anime, and they look totally, totally different from this masterpiece. For example, mm. uh, yeah, let's you, see. Infinite said feet designed to accommodate combination with God Bomber. Yeah, but are they even gonna make God Bomber? And why not just give us, of, why not just give us two feet? God, it's the classic of future proofing because in future proofing, but also why not just give us two sets of feet? They've done it before. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I noticed people tagged me in the Discord about Sonic Screwdrivers. Thank you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. anyways, let me uh pull these up on, on stream here so that we can compare. Um, it's this is the problem with 80s anime, right? Like, the, the disparity in, in design can be like intense. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's let's get let's get these pulled up. Okay, so guys, this shot here and this shot here are from the same show, <laughs> and they look mm -hmm. totally different. Those are two different yep. robots. Mm -hmm, from the masterpiece, so that's the problem <laughs> with and making like, a. And then compared to the masterpiece, it's like when I look at it's like when I look at DBZ and and you know who's working on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a really bad DBZ guy gave Vegeta an eighteen forehead, like an eighteen <laughs> head, not a forehead. I think I think this shot here where he's doing like a little like shimmy dance, like he's ready to do a hey yeah hey yeah, um, <laughs> that one looks closest to the masterpiece. But even then, it's not one to one because he yeah, has some more super the torso, yeah, yeah, because he has some more super robot proportions in that yeah. uh, frame. <laughs> And such. So that's always a problem. Because even Gundam runs into this problem also. Yep. Um, Mutech is like, like, say Legends is the best one. I can't. I didn't like that one either. <laughs> yeah, as someone who oh. loves Jinrai, I, yeah. there's still no perfect one. In terms of retail. That's like, per made by speaking, Hasbro. Personally speaking, Master Force is my least favorite of the three shows. Not because I don't like... Again, it's it's not... It's a subjective thing, right? Like, I just... I prefer... Vic Victory is my favorite of the Japanese trilogy, right? Hmm. So I don't have I don't feel like I have the attachment to Jinrai as much as I have an attachment to Power Master Optimus Prime. <laughs> mm. If that makes sense, right? Like when it leans it's, it's, when it leans yeah. more Jinrai, I start to get less interested when it leans more Power Master Prime. It, it, you know, that's the thing is uh, pretty much uh, Master Force is my laser. <laughs> it's yeah. the best way to describe it. <laughs> that's understandable. I get I totally get that because I understand when people are like I don't like well, laser. Like, like, that, I, like I get it. You know. It's a weirdish. It's a weird ass show. <laughs> um, I love yeah, yeah, because Master Force Welcome like, I, yeah, Master Force like, I like it as its own show. Like, if there's like, if, like in my brain, Master Force is not even like a Transformer show. It's yeah. a mecha anime in my brain. I, it works it. better as a mecha anime than a Transformer show, I think. But that's, yeah, that's why. I, is, that's I, why I, I, I appreciate it. Master Force. <laughs> I just, I, I, I prefer Victory's approach to things. But I will say, just to kind of like cap off the little discourse thing here. It's an Optimus Prime. This is not the last toy of this we're ever seeing. No, we're getting. I'm, I'm still. Watching I don't have to go generation. like with with you know with some other characters. You just sit and go. Well, that's the best we're getting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is we're gonna see another power. I I imagine Hasbro's gonna do their own version now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just I'm just waiting for the generations. Yeah. Uh, Jin Rai got Power Master Optimus Prime because mm -hmm. I know one it's gonna fit my collection better. And two, yeah. I probably like it aesthetically because they're not one to one the animation design for yeah. like, generations. I think they could. I think the generations one could find some happy medium between the original toy and the Master Force uh, design. Mm -hmm. So, speaking the, of because... the madness here, this is the last masterpiece release. Um, well, with... at least under that name, right? That's right. So this is how it's explained in the uh, Google translated text from the video. MP sixty which is the Genrai cab on its own in toy colors, is the 100th masterpiece figure. And they're taking away that brand name, and they're bringing in Transformers MPG. Now, MPG was Masterpiece Gatai, which was... That was the train bots, the right? The eight train bots were, were MPG 1 through 8. And then Super Genrai is MPG 9. And so apparently, we're not doing MP anymore, we're just going to do MPG. Which I find, which may, that's, I imagine. I don't know. I think they're going to do a pull a Bandai and change what that G means. I don't think it's always going to be Gatai. I think it's going to be like. I, because when I first heard, because I, I didn't pay attention to the train bots and didn't yeah. help that I heard nothing but bad things about them. Uh, but like, I always thought, when I first heard this, I thought it, 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 they're changing to be Masterpiece Generations. 
That could be another use for the G for sure. Because I imagine, but because I imagine, won't be surprised that they might want to do masterpieces of mm-hmm. outside of. I mean, they already did that with Beast Wars, but like, I feel like because it wasn't Beast, I forget, was Masterpiece Beast Wars own separate line technically? Yeah. Uh, Dap Boy Steve, we will be talking about the GI Joe Compendium a little later in the show. Um, so I imagine yeah. they just want to group everything to one line in this remade masterpiece generation. Psycho so just... mentions that we never got jazz. That's a car license problem because they made yeah. a cliff jumper, like a full on cliff jumper, and can't release it because they can't get the Porsche license. That's always the problem with Transformers is yeah. car licensing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ever wonder why Legacy Cyber doesn't look like <laughs> at the same car mode as he should be? You don't have a Dodge Viper license. If if you wonder yep. why certain studio series are not one to one accurate, licensing. <laughs> All right, let's move oh. on from this to G.I. Joe because G.I. Joe is a quick story. Uh, so, this is G.I. Joe Classified Series Tiger Force Wreckage. People are like, who the heck is Wreckage? And I, a kid who was a kid in 2003, was like, hey, Wreckage was one of the first five Tiger Force figures I ever owned, because he was in a five-pack, and he was a demolitions expert, and he's essentially just Firefly, but G.I. Joe. And that's his, he was a repaint of Firefly in 2003, and he's a repaint of Firefly here. Perfect. Right? <laughs> is he your comfort? Is it? Is like the classical Transformers? You have that one comfort character that's like a random background character. <laughs> Basically, I had a five pack of Python Patrol and a five pack of of Tiger Force from like two thousand three that used uh vintage O ring molds. I don't know why they made those, but that's it's the reason why I always gravitate towards Tiger Force and Python Patrol because I've had toys of them since I was eight. So you know, makes it yeah. That's always the thing is you you always gravitate you always or people so many people that gravitate because it, that's their childhood thing. Mm. <laughs> you know? When I saw Wreckage, I was like, hey, that's a guy I had. Uh, I'm still waiting for Python Patrol uh, uh, Major Blood. That'll be fun. But anyways, the cool part is he comes with a uh, you know his accessories and stuff. But he comes with the ATV, which we saw as the Cobra Ferret. We talked about I think last week or whenever we did one. Yeah, the Ferret was just announced as a Pulse exclusive. Now we're getting the Tiger Paw ATV, which just like in the 1989 Tiger Force lineup, the Tiger Paw is a repaint of the fair. So this is coming out again. Once again, Target exclusive, like everything, uh, Tiger Force and Python Patrol, which is fine. I like that they give a subline to Walmart and Target, give them some a little bit of new, but mostly reuse so that way you can kind of pick and choose. Um, this is all repaint stuff, but for me, I'm like, hey, I'm in. Uh, the thing is... I'll I'll let uh, our uh, friend of the channel, Josh, uh, recap this. Zero heads up, this was going to exist in previous live streams. 100% accurate. They did not say, they did not give us a name reveal, they did not give us a render reveal. Leaked photos last night. Up for Pruder out of nowhere at 9 a.m. Eastern for premium members, sold out by 9.20. It just, it went up on Pulse. Didn't know it was going up, so I wasn't up early for it. No clue when Target Pruder's going up. They went up at like, I think, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. And so it was a little bit of a disaster, to be honest. Um, it's I, weird, weird, which is really weird because I never really, Transformers never the GI Joe really never has this problem. From yeah, this is not a usual GI Joe problem, but they uh, they kind of botched this one. They kind of botched this one. Uh, I didn't know I had to be up early to order it from Pulse. So I hope that Target fulfills my order, uh, or that it floods the stores the way that the uh, Python Patrol Trouble Bubble did and stuff. So we don't have to worry about it. But yeah, kind of a kind of a weird thing. But um, I know I left the Transformers card up. Just pretend I switched it to GI Joe. <laughs> hey, they're part of the same universe. <laughs> same, same oh, universe, oh, same okay. company, okay. right? Yep. You know, uh, GI Joe has been around even longer than Transformers, so I should have put the GI Joe card for both of them. To be honest, you guys ready to talk about some Bandai toys, though? Yes. You guys ready for Bandai? Kind of Bandai. All right. <laughs> there is a Dragon Stars two pack of Bardock yeah. and First Form Frieza. Uh, how would you best describe this, uh, pack house? What would you call this? I'd call it pretty good dang molds for, for cheaper toys. Heck Especially yeah. the Bardock. Um, I think I saw Bardock before. He looks, uh, uh, Bardock, he... Bar- Bardock was yeah. really poor, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I actually own him. Actually, he looks like a Muteki says Freeze is too big, but I think that the scale is a little off. Freeze's head is no, kind no, of big, uh, that's, but... that, is, that is the one but... one common problem. Okay, with so Freeze is too large. All right. Yeah, no, that is that, that is the unfortunate thing about Dragon Stars is their their scaling is not great. They're yeah. they're like 
they're six inch scale, but they're not six inch scaling to each other. Is the problem with the line? Mm. Um, like it's not like free, uh, like you know, like Vegeta and Freezer are the most uh, are the most obvious. They actually did make Krillin small. They did compare to like other characters, yeah. thankfully. And they did Goten um, small too. Yeah. By the way, so I have Gotenks it, it, now. I found them at Target. Yeah. So that, that is the problem with the yeah. that, that is a problem with the line, but you know, but again, they are affordable figures mm-hmm. and so this pack's gonna be like uh, they, forty they bucks. Way better than they started, I mean. Oh yeah. Other stuff, because I've been uh, other stuff um, that you probably don't have. I, I have get a bunch all. of dragon stars, but they're older ones. <laughs> uh, like, ours, they, they also, uh, if you look through the Big Bad Toy Store page for Bandai Namco, they also did announce. Uh, they also there's pages for you know, you know those those of Super Dragon Ball of all figures. Oh yeah, I don't ever oh, those, those are great. Those are great. Yeah, <laughs> they, they uh, have there's, there's there are pages <laughs> there's pages for a base state Goku, Vegeta, and Super Saiyan Tree Goku also on their store page. Well, that's awesome. On, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this looks great. I don't have a Bardock yet, because I kind of feel like I want to get this one. Because, I mean, Frieza comes with a little death ball thing to blow up a planet. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, yeah, what like, Dragos... With Dragos... I, 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 Dragos are, are definitely improved the, since the beginning of the mm-hmm. line, and they're definitely a lot better. And I think for me and what... I think for me and why I like the figures so much is, like, I never grew up collecting the Jack Pacific Irwin stuff. Yeah, because I was like too like when I got the Dragon Ball, it was too late. Were, those those toys got like were sold out everywhere, like gone. So mm. get, collecting Dragon Balls kind of got me that feel of collecting those lines again. Yeah. So it, so that's why I, why I like about the line. Muteki, I won't get my attacks right because the uh, inconsistency between Tomi or not Tomi now <coughs> Toriyama. Toriyama Toriyama didn't even name his attacks consistently. Games kept changing on different things. Mm. Yep. I yeah. mean, Gogeta's one of the main suspects. Is it Plus Stardust here. Breaker or is it or Soul is Breaker? It, uh, is it Soul Breaker or Star Soul Punisher or Stardust Breaker? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Same move. But yeah, Dragon Star's really improved a whole lot. Uh, I'm I'm ha- I I I mean I just, like I said I got Go Tanks because uh, I just I happen to I have happen to find every them. Super Saiyan four. I have Super Saiyan Vegeta, eighteen Broly. Super I have, I got a Super Shen. I got Super Shen. All, all the Gogetas. I got Omega Shenron. He's a great figure. So, mm. also speaking of um, yep. also speak the of... Gotenks came with ghosts. Oh yeah, the, tiny, that's rude little ghosts. The 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 Super I'd love boot. to get the two point oh Super Saiyan Vegeta and stuff. The su- oh, yeah. the 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 Super Boot that came that's like the the pat the waymate of that Gotenks is great. Also, I seen reviews of it. It looks I great. I keep telling myself I don't need Super Boo. I have Kid Boo and I have Fat Boo. That that should cover me, but I keep looking at Super Boo, and I'm like, maybe I should get him. <laughs> also, uh, speaking of updates on certain stuff we already talked about, yeah. the Big Bad Toy Store have the Arca Riser and the Arc Eye Sword on their pages. The Arca Riser is seventy three ninety nine, and the Arc Eye Sword is fifty nine ninety nine. Or oh. you get them in a bun, or you could get the Narakiri bundle mm. set for one hundred thirty four ninety nine. That's um, very lot. That's a lot less than some other stores have been selling it. For. I think. Uh, Hold on. Comes with the, the, so the bundle comes with the Arc Sword, mm. uh, the Arc Riser, uh, and the Arc. So I, the Big Bang Toy Store page is kind of misleading because they have promo pics of the Sun and Moon cubes, but, but it doesn't come. With, yeah, they don't come yeah. with those. So, so if you see that, it doesn't. It just comes with the sword, the changer, and the base cube. Yeah, Jasonator mentions uh, things like. There's no Yamcha Dragon Stars. Yeah, there's some gaps. There's some characters. There's some big character gaps. Like they Yamcha, haven't done any yeah. like. They haven't done any of the smaller characters. They're doing a lot. Of, they're doing a lot of the big yeah. names. Which, you know, understandable. Where did this red <laughs> bump on my nose come from? It looks horrible. Oh. Again, there's a there's a radioactive spider trying to eat you. <laughs> it's a good thing I filmed Friday's video already. Um. Anyways, in the world of Bandai toys that you can't easily get, SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Hirobi Arc Scorpion Fine and Final Battle Weapon Set is a P Bandai exclusive, exclusive to Japan and Asia only. Because for some reason, despite Zero One being one of like. Six shows we have over here. We can't get the figure. It had a, it had a, it had a uh, comic. Questionable comic. <laughs> yeah, the less said about that, the better. Um. Anyways, it's Arc Scorpion. He comes with the uh the 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 green slashy bladey thing, the purple shooty thing, the the other green slashy thingy, the gold slashy thingy. Uh, the purple the purple shooty thing can also slashy thing. Uh, he can face off against Arc One. You can pose him like this with all the weapons around him. Uh, nine thousand nine hundred yen. Good luck finding him on a middleman because yeah. Why are you? Know, genuine question. 
What yeah, where is Rampage the... Vulcan? I've seen two people mention it in the chat already. Like, <laughs> why are the Toku figures so much more expensive compared to the anime ones? Because I've been looking Hate. through the anime ones. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Uh, I don't have a good example because they're all over there. But like, I was looking at Kaiju number eight earlier, right? Because he's coming out this month, and I was just checking my orders. Kaiju number eight has like these blue lines on his body, but he's mostly black, mm -hmm. black and white plastic, and then he's got some like little accent paint. Even with the alternate faces. Hirobi's chest is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 paint apps just for this little area on his chest. Which is ridiculous. I mean, even in the head up here, you still got like one, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 yeah, paint apps. Yeah, explain. Plus the, con the compound eyes, which are two layers yeah, of plastic. Yeah, that does explain. Because, like, you know, as someone yeah. who's like, uh, who collects the figure I stand your comrade kits, yep. I got Gaim at a con re uh, recently, and man, he had a lot of stickers because there were so many colors mm. on the Gaim's armor. I didn't realize he had. Uh, um, Mr. Tanuki has a little PSA. Premium Bandai will ship to PO boxes if you list the post office address and then the post office number as the unit number. So, mm. good to know. Um, and then you look at the belt too. The belt's got like seventeen. Oh man, the stick, the stick, the all the amount of stickers I had to put on the Sun Goku mm. driver on the kid it was insane. <laughs> uh, MBBSU is bummed about it being P Bandai, but was able to get one on two collectibles. I'm glad to hear that because I, I dipped out of the Zero One figure arts, but was collecting them for a bit. Uh, but that's why Rider figure arts are more expensive, even though they seemingly come with less stuff. It's because paint. 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 Comrade it's all metallic to paint too. That's the other thing. <laughs> it's not even. Comrade, I think it, I think it shows that Comrade designs are getting too complicated to display. I think so. Hard. I think I think Gotchard being chromed out was like a step too far. I think yeah. like which is also like, well, that's why I've seen the <laughs> Ultra Ultraman figure arts also and like they're a lot more cheaper than Riders. So yeah, yeah. They, and they have less. Uh, and I think it's because they have like one paint color. They're just silver for their uh, for their hands and stuff. Um, we're gonna do a new segment now, guys. Because uh, we haven't officially done this before. I've just kind of like rolled it into entertainment news. We're going to do comic book news. Yay! Straight up. I thought we got time. Let's let's give this a shot. If you guys want to see... About com look, we talk about comics so much yeah. at this point. I feel like we should talk about this. We'll exactly. About We're not going to cover all comic news. Just like we don't cover all toy news. I'm just going to pick and choose as a fits our stuff. If you guys like us doing this, please tell us. And we'll continue to do this like every week. I'll just select stuff that I think is interesting to talk about. So, first of all, I was digging on Amazon because I always go into Amazon searching books and look at what's been listed because I keep up with this stuff. So, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, MSD, uh, Kukuru's Doan's Island, Volume 1, is listed for a October 1st, 2024 release by Vertical Comics. Vertical Comics had previously done hardcover editions of Gundam The Origin. They did 13 of them. Um, oh yeah, hit the like button, guys. I forgot to mention that. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, if, if you've seen Zeltra, uh, pfft, have you seen Sanout's um, yeah. manga video? You probably have seen them. That's true, yes. I did cover these in the manga video. They're these nice hardcovers. Uh, also, Zeltrax said the Gotchard figure is painted in a way it's less fingerprint prone. Yeah, I think the way they did the chrome finish is uh, kind of like the Super Robot Chagokins, so it doesn't like grab fingerprints as much as like Seho Garo did, which is good. But anyways, um, Kukuru's Doran's Island is the uh, the spinoff of the manga that is based on the episode that Tomino banned from release outside of Japan due to the quality. Uh, and Yasuhiko, who was the director on the show that was in the hospital at the time when the episode was made, went back and redid it as a manga. Then that manga got turned into the movie we got a couple years back. So it's nice to see the manga's finally coming over. It's going to be by vertical. It's going to be hardcovers. I imagine... These will slot right next to the Origin volumes, nice and beautiful. Uh, and they're going to be coming out pretty quick, uh, unlike the uh, Shars Counterattack Bell Torturous Children from Denpo, which has taken forever. This is going to be October, and then Volume 2 is already listed for a December 3rd release. Uh, they're 20 bucks a volume, which says to me that it's going to be five volumes in total. Like the original manga was in Japan, it was five volumes. I don't think they're combining volumes, or else they would probably be more expensive, because... The original Origin hardcovers were 30 bucks and had two volumes worth in them. So, I think that's how it's going to be. But um, yeah, say about those hardcovers, especially the old Origin. Hopefully not these, but still. Don't drop them on your foot. Yes. Be very Oof. careful. <laughs> I dropped, they're, they're hard, I dropped, they're hard. They, that hurt like crazy. <laughs> mm. 
I okay. had all 13 volumes, or was it 12 volumes? I had all 12 volumes stacked on top of each other in the corner of my closet because I didn't have a shelf for them for a while. And then I finally pulled them out, and the carpet is still dented. Like, it's still oh, impressed by them. That's, is, that, is there any book, <laughs> are these books or, or anvils? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, man, yeah. They are by Jeez. far, though, the best manga releases I've ever handled. Oh, they, yeah. They have, like... like I love, uh, I love paper quality. They, they have omnibus paper quality, like like uh, yeah. Western comic omnibus paper quality, where it's super, like, thick pages... God, so what you're saying is, if there's ever a break-in, are those your go-to go go to two weapons you use? <laughs> yeah, but I'd probably use the sports equipment that I used for my Casey Jones costume a few years back first. <laughs> but those are backups. Like those, those are, are like backups. ammo. Like yeah. those are your range weapons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are the range weapons. I it's it's funny because um, I had I have a wooden bat that I broke. Like it was an old wooden bat. And I broke part of it, so it'd be kind of like a shattered. And I put some tape around it. To like sell it as like this is a Casey Jones bat. He doesn't care about the quality as long as it still hits. Was this a ha- uh, sa- uh, Hazel single bat? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's funny because it's like it kind of it's it's rough enough that it, you probably could hurt somebody with it. I, it probably is stab. It's you probably could stab people with that bat. It's not great, but it looks like the vintage toy in a way. Uh, anyways, uh, as promised, we are talking about the Skybound image and Hasbro announced. G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero Compendium, an announcement I am 95% happy about. (laughs) I know that sounds weird, right? Because it's all I've been asking for. All right, so paperback compendiums are a thing for Walking Dead, for Invincible, for Spawn. We've seen them. We know them if you're in the comics industry. I don't have, like, a good example of an image one, but they're pretty solid. The Invincible one's pretty great. They have a matte finish to their paper. The Spawn ones have glossy finish. Don't know why, that's just how they are. Um, But we finally got confirmation that the G.I. Joe Real American Hero, the Larry Hama run that I always talk about being the basis and probably still the best thing that G.I. Joe's ever produced, is, and it's still ongoing, it's up to issue 305, this is going to be issues 1 through 50 in a $65 paperback. That is not a bad price at all. Not a bad price at all. The Invincible Compendiums are sixty-five buck cover price, and they have like forty-seven issues in them, so it's it's comparable to that. The thing that has made me a little nervous here uh, is, let's see, I gotta find the exact verbiage. All right, it says every issue from the original series and its tie-ins with the all-new Compendium release printed on newsprint for that classic comic feel. Uh oh. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't have a problem with comic style feel, okay? Uh, again, I probably should have pulled the Invincible ones. Here's uh, the Milestone Compendium 3, which, by the way, is a 1,200 page book paperback. These are amazing. Uh, this I also has so. like 52 issues in it. So, this is a good comp for how these should be. This is on what I guess you would call like a newsprint feel because it feels like an old comic, but it's matte paper. Not newsprint. Newsprint, because newsprint got worse, is really thin stuff. Like that's Bible paper. So I hope when they say newsprint, they mean they mean that paper, as yeah, opposed like to that. glossy. I hope that they mean this and instead of glossy, but not that they actually mean like legit newsprint. Because if it's legit newsprint, that <laughs> would be a major problem. So, I think it's gonna be that because image is like how old Shonen Jumps used to be printed. Yeah. Oh god. That's what I hope. We I, don't think have, gonna, yeah. I think it's gonna be that because image is pretty well. Done I mean, they can, they got quality. a new cover drawn for this. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good paper. I think like image never. If there's one company that never cheapens out its image, yeah, and somehow still keeps their cost low mm-hmm. somehow. <laughs> and and for uh, context too, uh, it's found a way. <laughs> yeah, like I'm hoping they 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 balance it out. <laughs> Because here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't know what, what said, the way how Cal said, you know the meme of the guy holding the, like the science veil? like, finally, yeah. flank here. That's Todd. Imagine that with Todd. Finally, like, aha, I'll afford a uh, cheaper, pr- good quality paper by a cheaper price. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing to go with, with comparable stuff. This Milestone Compendium has a cover price of 60 bucks for all that. And it's on good quality paper. So I think that for this, even with you include licensing fees, it should still be on good quality paper because, you know, image, skybound. Uh, I imagine it's going to be like the Invincible Compendiums because they mention Invincible Compendiums 
as like a comparable format. So how about the spawn? Me, do you have any of the spawn compendiums? I do have the spawn compendiums. Those are all glossy. Do you want me to grab one? Mm. Well, you'll need to grab one, but I imagine it's yeah. similar. Uh, the spawn compendiums are all glossy paper, and they don't have the covers, which is weird. But Todd also sells art books of covers, so that kind of makes sense. Mm. Um, I will say that like you guys will get a comparison when this comes out. I have it on pre-order. I'm getting this day one. And if the paper is shit, I will tell you guys <laughs> straight up that it's bad. I, I'm cautiously optimistic that it won't be because they are putting a lot of effort into this. I think, and I think I if think... it is crappy paper, it's going to kill the whole thing from the jump. I don't think they're that dumb. I think it's going to be good paper. Yeah, no, I think the newsprint not... wording is wrong, it, but it's probably going to be matte paper. Like Here's the, I think if it's new paper, I think it will not survive. I, I only, no, I've never no. heard of any newspaper print uh, commandiums because I feel like I, think I have a, a, I have a um, there is a uh, He-Man book that's all the newspaper strips and that's still on like solid paper. So. Yeah, because I feel like if it's newspaper paper quality, it will just collapse. <laughs> just the structure yeah, it's not there. Yeah, it's too many pages to, to survive on newspaper quality, right? <laughs> yeah, so I think, yeah, I, I think if it was that, it would not survive. It would just collapse on its own, like, <laughs> like structure, like, sh like structural power. I think they're trying to pull um, the uh, nostalgia cord to get newsprint. Mm -hmm. Alright, I went and grabbed them anyways, just because we're talking about this, let's talk about it. Here's the Invincible Compendium 1. Uh, they've been printing this for like 10 years. This is what it, it kind of looks like. It's big, it's thick. Um, it has it has thicker pages than the Milestone, you know? But if it, it's the Milestone feel, we'll be fine, you know? But it's matte. It's matte paper. The Spawn ones, they're not, they're, they're, there's 50 issues of Spawn here, but it doesn't look like it because it's all glossy because of all the ink jetting that they did with Spawn. It makes sense. Todd, to glossy paper. Todd like his high qual. Todd like his high qualityness. <laughs> exactly. But again, with Spawn, you don't get covers. You don't get covers with the Spawn ones. It's just like. But, but it's probably. I imagine that it might just be says also issue two hundred one in the corner. <laughs> that might be also not even just for the art book. But I imagine that does. That probably is to compromise. You get yeah. this high quality glossy paper, but you lose the covers. Exactly. Um, now, while we're talking about paper, this actually is a news topic I put up. So yeah, this is the, like the Invincible, right? This one's issue. I, I think this is I forty-eight think the, issues plus a special, so it's forty-nine issues. So this is about I what think, you think the GI Joe should be, right? I think at the end of the day, even if the paper quality is so-so, it's still a good price for yeah. if anyone wants to get into this run. I think so too. Like this is the like IDW when they tried to reprint it, they were doing ten issues at a time at, at twenty-five dollar cover price. So this is like way better value. Now here's the thing I want to talk about. Uh, we've been talking about DC Finest, right? Uh, there's mm -hmm. no new news on that, but DC Finest are coming up at 40 bucks for 600 pages. We've talked about them in the past. And I was trying to get a comparison of, like, what are those going to feel like, right? Well, here's the thing. The Milestone Compendium is 60 bucks, right? It's like, thir is it 1,200 pages, right? We talked about this. Pretty solid stuff. I got, in the mail, the uh, Batman Beyond Compendium. Which is uh, sixty bucks cover all, price well, that, as well. That, that's that's the one with all the top the, the that's the tie-in comic right, right for the show. All the tie-in comics. It doesn't have the Return of the Joker adaptation, but it has all the tie-in comics. These are the same cover price, but uh, Batman's only like seven hundred pages. And first of all, I was like, "That's that's a lot." I picked up Batman on sale because of this. But <laughs> the thing about Batman, and the reason I'm holding him like this, if you hold the milestone by the spine. That's about that's about your sag potential there. Like just me holding it like this, right? Right. Yep. See it drooping. How about the Batman Beyond? Wait for everybody to catch up on the stream. Oh yeah, yeah wait for it to catch I up for me. I see both of them. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh wow! The, <laughs> that, uh, that's a droop. The cover is not nearly as thick on the Batman Beyond as it is on the Milestone. The pages feel about the same, but the cover isn't as thick. So I'm wondering if DC Finest, because 40 bucks for 600 pages is kind of nutty for, like, DC. So, like, I'm wondering if it's going to feel a little bit what's like a, this. What's the Marvel, what's the Marvel Epic Collection? You have to, you I have an shows. Epic Collection right here. <laughs> I thought this through. Marvel's Epic Collections have glossy covers. So they're about, well, this one's one of the, the longer ones. Um, this is an X-Men one I bought because I'm in X-Men mode. But uh, this one is, like, Four five hundred and two pages. 
So that this is about 502. So a DC fine is going to be a little like about 100 pages longer. This feels pretty sturdy. It's a glossy cover, right? So it feels like it holds up pretty good. I mean, SAG SAG's still kind of there. But I think the matte cover being a little thinner on the Batman Beyond, it's making me think that's going to be the one drop downside to DC Finest, is I think they're going to go with this style cover as opposed to like a glossy, like epic collection style. But then the price will be lower, so... Yeah, it's a budget, again, these are, again, it's a bud. those are going to be budget releases yeah. for new fans and all that stuff. So, so I, I, I just, I, it was a thought I had, because I got the Batman Beyond and I was like, I think that's going to be what a DC Finest feels like. Of course, we will have to wait and see in November. Um, now, adding to the uh, the GI Joe, the GI Joe comes out October fifteenth for sixty five bucks. It's volume one. Uh, there will be a digital version as well if you're in digital comic buying. There is a listing on the Penguin Random House website that is, I think it's Penguin. Random House. No, Simon <laughs> and Schuster. The that Simon sounds is, like a trustworthy. Oh, yeah. no, the, the Penguin House website, that sounds like some kind of like B story, the pe- like Penguin yes. plot for a Batman comic. Uh, the Penguin, Penguin Random House. <laughs> it's when he teams up with Riddler. You know, um, I've applied there. Yeah, uh, you've applied to Penguin Random House? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't want me. Yeah, <laughs> that's sad. They, 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 they don't deserve you. Um, <laughs> anyways, so I was on the Simon Schuster website. There is a Transformers compendium listed. Which one? Marvel, IEW, Marvel, Marvel IEW. Transformers, which we had ah. had announced before. That's apparently coming in September. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I know it's not a final listing. It's not been fully solicited. There's no press announcement for it. Um, I don't like the mapping on that. So this, for context, I'm, I'm going like way too long in this new subject. We'll get off of it in a moment. Um, for context, this compendium is issues one through fifty which is totally fine because the special missions mini uh, the special missions second series they had two ongoing GI Joe books for a while the special missions uh, are led into by issue 50 so special missions should start between 50 and 51 and then alternate basically so I think in compendium 2 we're going to start seeing special missions inserted so it Wait, won't be like back uh, backtrack what's our special missions for view of never heard it's a heard se- of? it was the second comic I that's what I, that's why I mentioned there was two comics going it was G.I. Joe and Special Missions was the second book going at the time. So they came out concurrently, which means if you're reading it, uh, they inter- intersect with each other, right? A uh, quick uh, quick thing I want to say. Yeah. Uh, if it, we, they cannot do Archie Sonic Companions, legal nonsense, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. So They're Special Missions and G.I. Joe weave in and out of each other until Special Missions ends and G.I. Joe keeps going. So I'm hoping Compendium 2 isn't just 51 to 100 because we need Special Missions to be alternating starting with 51 so we need those two books intersecting and they did say uh they did say in their press release uh right here you know where's the i gotta get the quote make sure it yeah i say the words correctly um it is original series and its tie-ins so i think the next volume is not going to be a straight number like this one is and i think we got yearbook issues that has some new stories there's bio pages. There's stuff to add, starting with the second one. I hope they do that. Now with Transformers, the Transformers one is listed as issues one through one, issues one through forty-four, which I hope is not the final mapping because the GI Joe and Transformers miniseries happens after issue twenty-three, and the Headmasters miniseries happens after issue thirty-eight, and those miniseries have to happen before events happen in the main book. So I get that, like you would take. You know, the 80 issues of, of Transformers, the four of G.I. Joe and Transformers, and the four of Headmasters, and make that 88 split it in half, put 44 in one, and then, you know, the other the other 36 plus the two miniseries in the second. But reading order-wise, G.I. Joe and the Transformers and Headmasters need to be in volume one. And I hope they correct that, but I'm going to wait... <sighs> Before they finally solicit it, because that may not be a final, uh, you know, issue Do I will, I will say, though, if they do this, I understand, because uh, to be honest, the way you describe it, make it a little too complicated. It's, it's, it's Here's the thing. It, you could say it's too complicated, but this is like literally their job. <laughs> because the thing is, is that when you have comic collections, the point of them is to make things easier. Marvel and DC will insert stuff together. The, the X-Men Epic Collections, for example will put the uncanny X-Men and X-Men issues that go together and intersect them in the order they need to be for a storyline. And with Transformers, 
if you don't have the G.I. Joe miniseries, Bumblebee dies off panel and becomes Goldbug. And then just comes back as Goldbug. It doesn't make any sense just reading it straight. And then you'll also just get to a point where the headmasters just are there. And you don't have any of their backstory. And then if you have to read that at the end, it doesn't make as much sense. So if they're going to be collecting everything, like they say they are, they need to be putting those into the actual reading orders of the books. And it should be simple to do that because, uh, you know, that's not something IDW did. IDW put the miniseries in the final volume. Um, so I hope they don't do that again because I think, again, if you're going to make these better than what was already before, you got to insert the issues where they go. And it's doable because all the other publishers do it. Invincible does it as well for some of its specials. So just a matter of slotting them in. So anyways, that's my that's my ramble on that. My... I think it's more. I think it's the more how you worded it. Me, it's, yeah. I feel like it's more complicated than it, it's it way is. less complicated than like anything that like Marvel or DC does. To be honest, because it's just too many series, and you just you just. You know, I you, feel like, yeah, because I think yeah. that's the thing with uh, people trying to get into comics is like, they they hear stuff like that and get scared. Yep. Even though it's really it's not as complicated. I think it's exactly. more. I think that's you and just so need, I, the, and that's that's the thing is I don't want to like overcomplicate things, but. If they're going to be collecting this properly and to make sure it's not confusing for new readers, just put it all in and not worry. Like, new readers aren't looking at the context. They're looking at this as volume one, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's all in the correct order with volume one and volume two, volume three, etc., that, I think, is what will help, is if it's all in the proper order. Because um, IDW tried to split everything off, and it, it's like, well, how is anybody supposed to figure out when you're supposed to read it, right? Uh, think about, a uh, perfect example, the Sonic and Ninja Turtles IDW collections. Mm -hmm. The way they just slot in the miniseries, where, they, they're, where they're supposed to go. Um, mm -hmm. I hope they do that here. That's my, that's my hope, because mm -hmm. otherwise it will be confusing to people. So, Anyways, anything else on this? Oh, no, I'm just happy that yeah. fi uh, I can finally check the Larry Hama stuff yes. out, finally. It's going to be great. That's more people are going to be able to get this than ever, and that's that's I think the best part, right? So I've been me, that, I've been wanting because see how you always talk about the Harry Lama series, it makes me really want to read it. But like I had do have issue three hundred or three hundred one. I forget what was the first one mm -hmm. in Skybound three hundred one. Right? I, I check a little bit of that. I enjoy it, but I, my brain's like I want to go back. I want to go back and start from the beginning. That's what I did when I started reading yeah. it too. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I it's like I go, I couldn't read this, but the part of me wants to go back and read the, the beginning. Yeah, kind of thing. It's not like me with. Uh... With a uh, spawn where I'm just like, eh, I'll just keep going. <laughs> with Larry Hama, it's like, oh man, I want to read the previous 300. So I'm looking forward to this, and I'm hope I I'm hoping it's good. You know, I hope they don't screw this up because that'd be really sad. Because everything that they've done in the past, as Skybound as a company, says that this will be great. So I'm gonna put some faith in them. But I'm keeping my eye on them too. If that Transformers solicitation comes out, I'm sending them an email. So I'm just gonna be like, hey, hey, you gotta, <laughs> you said you're including everything. You gotta put them in the right order if you're gonna include it. Um, all right. So, anyways, enough about that. Uh, Ninja Turtles got a 40th anniversary comic coming up, which is pretty cool because, hey, Ninja Turtles 40th anniversary. So, is it? I know. Do we have confirmation of what's gonna be in the book? Because I assume, that's what this is about. <laughs> okay. It is an oversized anthology one-shot including contributions from creators across the Turtles comic history, including Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, who's done something else, which is kind of neat. Um, and we'll also include creators including Jim Lawson, uh, Ciro Nielli, Tristan Jones, Paul oh, nice, Harmon, dude. Steve Levine, uh, and Andy Serrano, Rhonda Patterson, Pablo Tunica, Freddie E. Williams II, Sophie Campbell, Tom Waltz, Lloyd Goldfein, Carrie Randolph, Emilio Lopez, Dan Duncan, Eric Burnham, uh, Sarah Miller, Luis Antonio Delgado, Chris Allen, and more. And wow, that's a lot. It's a twelve dollar comic. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's it's a lot. <laughs> and there's nine covers that they've shown us. You guys want to see the nine covers? Oh, uh, yes. Um, so but I'm really hoping. Eastman and Laird I... covers the first one, of course. What I'm hoping is, essentially with all those um, creative heads, essentially with some of these covers, I'm hoping it's not just the IEW universe. It just, if it's going to be a big 40th anniversary, I want to span across the, the Turtleverse. Yeah. I want to see just like nice, like follow up stories in each universe and all that stuff. Because I see, I heard like, I heard such a Shion Unali, a Shion Nelly there. I'm like, I want to see, mm. it's like, I would like to see 
one more continue eventually of the 2012 Turtles, for example, if he's on the book here. It reminds me of uh, the Milestone 30th Anniversary comic where they yeah. did a crossover between new Milestone and old Milestone, and then the rest of the book was like follow-ups to a bunch of uh, hanging Milestone plot threads from the old mm-hmm. universe. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, cover-wise, I think the most striking here is the fact that it's a 2003 cover. Oh, yeah, because they, I'm um, blanking the artist's name, but they got back the artist who did a lot of the DVD art yep. for that entry, and it looks so good. <laughs> uh, that's a cu- that's an IDW-specific cover, but then there's this other one with all the villains from 2003 Villain. in the uh, actual looks art so style, good. too. It looks so good. It I love it. It looks great. The show's getting its moment. Uh, and then there's also this really cool one. I like this one, the cover D, a lot with the uh, red bandanas. Mm. So... Uh, that's it for comic news. I thought about talking about X Men comics, but I talked way too long about GI Joe. We'll just we'll just go we're just gonna go on to the the Marvel Legends stream because that was a heck of an event today. Um, hey, you woke up for it, right? I woke up early for it. I was like, I can't I can't sleep in today because and your brain's like, when's Marvel? <laughs> when's Marvel? Um, there are official pictures out, but I actually screen capped the stream for us so that way we could go through what they showed on stream. It was a little different than what we got in official photos. Um, uh, not sure. Uh, do, not sure. Uh, do you have the the leak image? The I leak, do have the, the leaked the, image. The... We will get there. Um, <laughs> it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, there was uh, quite a bit of shenanigans today. Um, so shenaniganery. Shenaniganery. Uh, the Marvel Legends team, I thought brought it. I mean, they oh, have brought it in the, the past, best. but this is this is one of the best uh, fan streams I've seen. Mm. Um, it it like makes up for all the bad like. Oh, wait, this is comic books. I mean, it still technically is, but there we go. Marvel Legends. Um, all right, let's take a look. So first of all, we had our usual panel. We had, you know, Ryan, Dwight, and Dan. Uh, no relation to our Ryan. No relation to, like, the <laughs> seven Dans that review toys. Um, so this... He's a level eight three. Yes, exactly. Um, so that was our first thing. They first, they talked about, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine. They talked about taking these figures to the movie, which is almost, like, implying to me that... They're not making a Deadpool and Wolverine wave like right away. It might be. I imagine again with the whole movie, like the, all the MCU the movies movie locked down back. with secrets. So I don't know how they could even make a wave, right? Also, I imagine also since all the move, all the, you know, the MCU movies being pushed back, also messed up with the yeah, uh, you know, messed up with the the whole scheduling. Because again, well, you know, like we said with la- the last build a bigger mm-hmm. wave, it felt like a lot of those comic characters were meant to be alongside movie characters, but since. Deadpool three, Deadpool Wolverine's only movie MCU movie we're getting this year, so that's kind of screwed things up, I imagine. I wonder if um if we aren't getting a wave right away, and they're just gonna wait and do like a, a No Way Home thing, and then just do them later when they're more accurate. I would, I would say, I wasn't a big fan of these boxes when I first saw them in the initial picture, but I yeah. think seeing them in person, I kind of like it because it makes me realize that they're pretty much be figure art boxes now. They kind of are, <laughs> and they're nice and square, so they don't freaking slide like, everywhere square and small to pack like it's actually nice looking <laughs> yeah uh kyle deadpool 3 was supposed to be like it was supposed to be last year then they moved it to may of this year then they moved it to july so uh um, right yeah and mr dookie says the r rating might be throwing them off as well yeah i mean i think like these are going to be marked 14 plus and call it a day too um, what was it yeah the box says 14 plus which yeah 14 plus so yeah Falcon Sex says, my guess is they don't have the budget for two waves like No Way Home, and they're just going to wait to do a whole wave after the movie. You can only get a two-pack. You only get a two-pack in Colossus for the movie release. Yeah, I think something like, well, if we see something, it'll be from past Deadpool movies. So, we'll mm-hmm. see. Give us movie Colossus. Uh, give us best movie Colossus. Yep. All right. Uh, then they were talking about all the past... Uh, oh, I didn't screen cap it. They also talked about the Iron Man figures, but we already talked about this. Um, they were talking about their past anniversary lines, which have always been a little bit of a mixed bag, I think. Um, I, I think the, the best one. The I think the best one, one was the best one yeah. in the past, right? The best, yeah. I think the because Spider Man had the pricing issue. Eighty years was not actually eighty years wasn't a bad year. I like uh, eighty I think years because it had a good variety to it. Yeah, yeah. Marvel ten years and Infinity Saga could just be interchangeable. Honestly, so boring. I. <laughs> they're like, here's the MCU figures we haven't made yet, and it's like, okay. Um. Anyways. So they showed packaging from all the past. X, uh, X, uh, yeah, the X Men one was kind of meh. the X Men one was very uh, meh. They're like twentieth anniversary of the movie. Half the line is comic figures. I'm like, but like, why'd you only make Wolverine, Mystique, Magneto? Uh, they only made Wolverine, Mystique, Magneto, Xavier, and then the freaking Deadpool characters. And I was like, where's Storm? Where's Cyclops? Like, what the hell? That line was uh-huh. frustrating. Um. Anyways, 
So, this year's anniversary line will be celebrating Marvel 85 years, because just like last year where it was the Avengers was the anniversary line and we got packs for oh, yeah. X-Men, Wolverine's 50th is the other, like, anniversary. I, I like different. celebrating Marvel 85 years. It just seems to be no more Marvel. <laughs> it's like, this is, like, it's the most, like, hey, look, Marvel for 85 years. We're just going to do more of what we're doing kind of thing. Basically. <laughs> but, boy, did they bring it. First up, we got an astonishing X-Men Wolverine on a uh, brand new mold like just straight up new mold. Yeah, I thought because I thought this was the the, the, the heat that was mm. it the death of return wolverine mold that hit the, yeah. the heat claws no it's but no it's, it's all new oh it looks so because um I was gonna plan to get the 97 x-men wolverine and then I couldn't find it so then this come up I was like there's there is my de facto wolverine finally mm. he also <laughs> so comes with alternate claw. hands besides just fists and claws he can point at you yes <laughs> he can point and go bump yes <laughs> at you also, also, the best, best unmasked uh, Logan head. Plus, on top of this, he has a new articulation. He's got the Renew Your Vows Spider-Man upper torso ball joint plus lower torso ab crunch. Reverse that. Does he have toe joints? <laughs> uh, he doesn't have toe joints, but he's got everything else. Great unmasked head as well. He doesn't Just... look like a mountain man, finally. <laughs> yeah. He looks amazing. Also, this also doubles as a Wolverine X-Men. Figure. Yes, this is your closest for 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 your Wolverine the X Men fans. This is the closest. Also, also, get. uh, arm hair is the arm hair molded or painted? Looks like it's just painted. But, but it looks fine. like because well, the molded arm hair on ninety seven looked good. They didn't paint it. <laughs> they didn't paint it, so he looks like, like weird flesh growths. Yeah. On I, remember, I remember that with the arm hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, then they showed the shot of of uh Logan with Emma and Cyclops, and I was like, so when's uh, Beast and I... Kitty Pride, huh? Yeah, now I, I, need, I was planning to get that Scott Emma, but I didn't yet, so I need to go back and get those figures now. Look at them. Look at them strutting together. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, but it looks good in different angles. Josh, good. you know, it's mm -hmm. weird. I'm not a big fan of Josh Ween writing, but I do think about, like, Asanji yeah, is his best a work. Angle, Josh yeah. Ween is his best work, I think. Uh, I I have read his Astonishing X-Men. It's good. And I it's like what I read Jeff Johns' Green Lantern. I'm like, ah, oh, the person sucks, but damn it, they wrote a good comic. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those like, yeah. I know, I know that feel. Mm. Uh, this, uh, he's going up for pre order April 16th. Uh, he is and a. $24.99. $24.99, yes. Uh, I will be flipping back and forth between two screens here because Preternia has got info from Amazon directly. Um, he will be $24.99, which is great. Uh, no problem. With that, um, there were official. Because of, we went because of another accessories and the new mold, he's worth it. Totally. Um, and so I'm excited for that because uh, you guys know I love Wolverine. <laughs> I love anything X Men. Um, all right, next up, they showed this is the one. I, this is my only problem with this stream today, and it's not the stream's fault; it's the reveals. Um, we're getting. Uh, they're calling her Warbird, which is her like 2000s name, but it's Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, the black suit. Uh, this is on the, a on Target the exclusive. On the Black Widow body, I guess Target just real that makes it has that mold that this body mold exclusive to them. I guess. I guess so. <laughs> I I hate that she's Target because I don't think there's a reason for her to be, and I feel like after the Black Widow fiasco, besides, it's, well, it's uh, well be besides drag. besides Target yeah. buying the figure, I imagine. Yeah, I know. Uh, Eventually, this mold's got to get away from Target, right? Yeah. Which was still like, oh, this is a new great. torso. They did change the mold. It is a new torso. Oh, because, uh, because, yeah, because has the, the black one has the zipper, right? Yeah. Going down the middle. And the mold already escaped Target. It's in that shield pack for Sharon Carter. So. Oh, I didn't know about that. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Um, uh, oh, she looks incredible. She looks um, amazing. I'm not going to call her Warbird, by the way, guys. I'm just going to call her Miss Marvel, okay? <laughs> well, well yeah. I imagine they call her, I imagine. I imagine Carl Warbird not to confuse because many yeah. bunch of people now know Miss Marvel as Kamala, so it's probably one of those. Right, I'm gonna definitely brand. try to get her. I'm gonna be a lot more on top of this than I was. I was. Carol, I guess. I'm happy to get classic Carol, especially since the only way you get her back then was in a three pack of what Radioactive Man. Guess what? And... That three pack she was in before was also a Target exclusive. They like Carol again. So <laughs> I will say it's so baffling. They still don't have a, a a brand new mold of like new. Like Captain Marvel, Carol. Yeah, we need this mold. We need we need Captain the Captain Marvel look on this mold, right? After you think with two movies, with the two movies, you think we got one new comic modern Carol? It's kind of we haven't. This is the first Carol comic figure we've gotten since 
the rich the what Age of Ultron wave Captain yeah. Marvel Carol. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a long time. And um, she's, she's also twenty four ninety nine. Yeah. Um. She, she doesn't surprise because she doesn't come with that much extra stuff. She's got two extra hands. She comes with two stuff. heads. Two heads. Hey, power two heads effects are cool though because we don't get those. Mm hmm. All right. Next up. Oh my god. Okay, guys. I know that people don't love. Oh, binary does count. That does count. That was the most recent cast. Yeah, yeah. Harold Ambers. Um, guys, I know people don't like Superior Spider-Man. They're totally justified oh, for that. I well, I think it's more people are tired of. I, I'm tired of it too. But that original yeah, comic I think, was great. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. That's the thing. People are tired of bringing him back. They yeah. still. Lo- I see people still love the original comic. He I think just, comic like, at the good. end of Superior Spider-Man, that should have been the last time we saw him. We, uh, sh- bring it up for Spider Verse, but like the fact he's returned and everything, just I, stupid. But. I still love that original comic. This makes me very, very happy because I was never happy with that original figure because well, it was based funny, on concept art. Yeah, I didn't know. Thanks to the stream, they they say it was concept art. I yeah. knew that figure always looked weird. I always wonder why he looks so weird. Yeah, it's concept but art. But I love how they just rolled him out and they're like, hey, we made him better than Iron Spider because we actually articulated the legs fully. Yeah, it was the Iron Spider had them both. Only three points of yep. the spider laser. Here, each joint is posable. Mm-hmm. Is it sane? He's on the renew your vow. No, no, he's not. He's the on the renew your vows. He's got the toes. He's on the renew no, your no, vows no. body. Well, the torso is there because he has a because he has a he has a normal ab a crunch, pool. and that's probably to accommodate the backpack. But he does yeah. have the toes, so he, is he also has toes. two heads, two heads, one with the white eyes and one with the metallic like silver yeah, shine. They gave, eyes, they gave which... him like this this printing, so it looks like the reflection of the city in his in his face. Hey, he comes Chad, with claws you... and thwips and fists. Like, hey, Chad, can you guess the price of this figure? Yeah, take a guess. He's he's a mainline item, luckily. What's his price, guys? I want to see chat response. I want to see the chat response yeah. too, but I wonder if it's gonna to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's saying anything. He's only twenty four ninety nine. Yep. The Hasbro Pulse, uh, the Hasbro press release yeah. said he's thirty, but the Amazon page says he's twenty five, and he goes up tomorrow. So somehow like dirty- no spider tax. Like Infinity War term brought up, no spider tax. Iron like, Spider that's insane. plus dirty, so like, and this is more worth. Like, oh yeah, it's more worth the dirty if he was dirty because of those oh, totally. legs but and uh, somehow after says you, but like that's <laughs> impressive. That's so impressive. I'm so excited, guys. This this stream hit me with so many things that I love uh, directly. Uh, are we gonna are, uh, are we gonna get to this next one? The two pack. Uh, I think the next one is our our fan channel, buddy. And that is Scar, son of Scar. Hulk. Finally, um, he got. It was te- Was he used to tease last stream? I think he, he was. was teased because they showed us his knife before. Uh this is fantastic. They did a Scar back in like 2008. It sucked, terrible, awful. Well, that was during the bad era for Hasbro. Bad Hasbro era. This is incredible. I was just reading Wolverine Origins, and Scar showed up, and I was like, "Man, why don't we have a good Scar figure?" Finally, got a good Scar figure. He looks, he's big. He's Hulk-sized. You know, like, let's go. I'm so excited. He looks amazing. He's going to be a fan channel release. He's not going to be full retail, but he's going to be fan channel. Now we just need a Red Hulk. And then you have, no, no, now we just need an A-bomb. And then here's your H to smash. (laughs) And we also, we need a new Red She-Hulk. And we need a new Modern She-Hulk on the new mold now. So. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He's 40 bucks. Yep. Average look size. Average deluxe price. I don't got a problem with that. I'm just happy he's not a build a figure. Mm-hmm. I'm so over build a figures, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know, if right? If we never have a build a figure again, I would especially not. Especially how, especially how good these figures are for their price. Yeah. like these are like, like I feel like the, these this wave or this line feels like what Marvel Legends should have been years ago. Mm. Like this is classified quality, I think now for Marvel Legends for these figures to really cook. Their, they're really doing a good job. Speaking of. Hey, it's Iron Fist. Uh, we finally got our classic Iron Fist. On the renew your bo- renew your renew your valves body. Yes, yep. that reverse ab crunch and diaphragm joint. To- toes, toes, and everything. And on top of that, they just rolled out all these hands he comes with. Beautiful. Which I think some of them were used for Shang Chi, but still, it doesn't matter. It's yeah, great. I think some of them for Shang Chi. I think some of them from the first Iron Fist, <laughs> the white one from but, the Odin. But Day. he's not. But he's not alone. He got he's his not buddy. alone. He does high flying kicks. He does his stuff. He has a fist of iron, but he comes with a brand new modern Luke Cage. 
Yes. Like, That's pretty cool. Look at I was going to get Look the at classic. Look those two together. Heroes for Hire. Yeah. Heroes for Hire. Good old power duo. So oh, excited. I love it. Like, like I We was just got the, the, classic. the classic Luke Cage, like, like last last year, right? Yeah, so. I was gonna get the classic Luke Cage, but like I'm more i more grew up with the modern this this like design a much and figure too. Yeah, and he looks so great. Like he's you, basic, but that's what you need for a Luke Cage. You know what I love about it too? Uh, I think there's a close up here. Um, the way they sculpted him, he has shoulder sleeves sculpted to his shoulders. Like yeah, because he's a sleeve he a new mole. Is I think he's a new mole, right? He's a new mole. He looks- and they specifically said like we sculpted the sleeves, the end of the sleeves. Which is amazing. He also has the Luke cage on his brass knuckles. Yes. Uh, where's his brass knuckles? There's his brass knuckles. Now, I gotta tell you guys. The torso is one of the most impressive things I've seen out of Marvel Legends. I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, you can see the folds in the fabric. Because he's wearing a really tight shirt. He's super muscular, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but it actually looks like a shirt. Not it just actually looks like on. a shirt. Like, it's got the, the folds like being stretched out. And you can even see his nipples. I know that sounds weird, but, like, it's just an insane detail that, like, it's stretching so much because it's such a tight shirt that it's even got, like, the nipple line in it. I love it. Like, it, That's again, amazing. It's not just, <laughs> yeah, it's not just a paint-on shirt. It's an actual molded shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's an actual molded t-shirt. They really did a great job. I, I'm so excited. And you know what? And you think with all that new molding, you think with all that new molding, he would be more, this would be more expensive. But nope, it's oh, 50, 50 bucks. bucks. Same price as Average- two normal figures. Yep. God, they are it's spoiling a bad us right buff. Now. Yeah, no. Right? <laughs> Actually, so I've always wanted a new uh, Luke Cage, and that one looks pretty dang good. Yeah. Me and Iron Fist. I literally wanted both of them, is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. I think higher. it's like the Hank and Janet pack, right? Like, oh, those okay. are two characters you want to have both of. <laughs> exactly. It's not like buying mm-hmm. Brood Wolverine to get Lalandra. It's like you're actually uh, getting two characters that go together, right? I imagine the last thing we're going to talk about made you really happy. <sighs> Um, oh, oh, yeah, before we get too far ahead, uh, April 23rd is the, uh, is the pre-order date for these guys. They're spacing the pre-orders out. I don't mind that. Good. Things to You're click smart. On the don't mind. Also, but also not the cr- make the, make the site crash. Guys, site crash. guys, 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 everybody, Mina, the chat, whatever we call <laughs> everybody. I have waited 20 years for this. We have a Good Danny old... Ketch Ghost Rider figure. Danny Ketch, not Johnny Blaze. We have Danny gotten Ketch. Johnny Blaze three, technically four times in modern Marvel Legends. We have gotten a Cosmic Ghost Rider. And we attempted a Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider. But we finally have a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. Did, was this so hard to do? This is like, this is like legit. This is probably my number one, Cameron. That's a good point. <laughs> this is legit. Like, I have been waiting so long for this. Because for those that are unaware, there is a problem with Marvel. It's the same problem that DC has. All right? See this figure of Wally West as the Flash? That I, I always pick up Wally yep. West Flash figures. Wally West is the reason why the Flash in adapted material has cool powers, has cool villains, has cool storylines. But he always Barry Allen. But it's always given to Barry Allen. Johnny Blaze... Did not have the penance stare, the chains, the hellfire, the ability to possess vehicles. Oh, yeah. All that stuff that they used in the Nick Cage movie and gave to Johnny Blaze is all stuff that had Johnny Ketch had first. And they gave it to Johnny in the comics too, just like they did with Barry and giving him Wally's stuff. This is the problem, is that Danny Ketch got left behind because all of his Im- unique stuff was similar. siphoned off and given to Johnny Blaze. Sim- similar to Kyle Rayner, similar to Into Robin. Yeah, it's yeah. just <laughs> Green Lanterns, yep. Exactly. And you know what's ironic? I just watched Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance for the first time this weekend before this announcement, so I feel like I called this into existence somehow. <laughs> but, like, not, Master Blaze, I'd say I, I hate Barry Allen, and I don't hate Johnny Blaze either. It's just... Their they they their stuff they're popular for got siphoned off from their legacy people, but yep. mm-hmm. I watched Ghost Rider: Spirit of Avengers the first time. That was an absolutely bonkers, insane movie. It wasn't good whatsoever. I had a great time watching it. <laughs> well, how do you feel about the co- the convo? Uh, how do you feel the, watching that movie? 
Yeah. How do you feel about the what was it, the Kong Har- Harvester or whatever the ve- giant vehicle was? Seen? Oh yeah, they, he turned uh, Transformer Cybertron Metroplex into a Hellfire vehicle. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of that scene? That was fantastic. I was like, this is amazing. This is not a good movie, but it does not care about being a good movie. It does not care about logic. It's just like, does it look cool? The movie exactly. And then oh, I yeah. found out the directors made Crank, and then it all made sense. <laughs> but do you know what's the best part of this Ghost Rider figure? Well, anyways, my point is in that movie. Uh, Danny catches blue flame angel powers get given to Johnny Blaze. So, like, I'm just like, oh, yeah. this is always the problem. You know the best part about this figure Why is, guys? Danny catch movies? They raised Danny catch movies with a different origin. So here he is. New new body. <laughs> I don't even think he's reusing anything on the body. He may be reusing the head. No, um, the head's new. I think the head's new because it looks different from the previous it does look, Yeah, Marvel. it does look different. Um, he's this, The chain's reused. That's no, fine. Yeah, definitely. Then they bring out this fire, and they brought this out, and I was like, show the bike, show the bike, show the bike, show the bike. Stop showing me the Johnny. Show me the bike. There's the bike. <laughs> I was getting uh, really antsy. I'm doing, uh, doing, doing a quick comparison. Yep, the head is new. I'm looking at the previous Johnny Blazes. Great. It's ear. It's, it's ear. Re- no, you know, it has, at least the flame's new. No. It might be really I mean, how many because... times can you render a skull, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's more of the paint. It's a... Uh... Because some Johnny Blazes, uh, some previous Ghost Riders, uh, yeah. had different paint for the skull. Um, it's definitely the, the more white skull look, for sure. Yeah. Anyways, here's the bike. It can wheelie. They give you a stand that's made out of fire, so it can just... It can do the, batter- it can do the battery ram mode. Yeah. Because this is in the comics. It does. Uh, look at this. One of the press, one of the press foes has it doing the cure, the cure slide. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Peacemaker says, is there a reason they yeeted the other bike off the table? Because Dwight knew that Johnny's been stealing Danny's spotlight all these years. Um, it's even got the symbol where D- uh, Danny touches to turn into Ghost Rider. This part on the front slides down, so you can like slide it up and down. Battery like ram. It's battery ram battery mode. Battery ram effect. They did a shot of the Akira bike slide. <laughs> of course, everything needs to do that now. <laughs> yep. April thirtieth, one p.m. Eastern. Nobody get in my way. You might die. Fifty. Um, only sixty bucks. <laughs> makes yeah. sense. According according to the Amazon listing. Oh, that's the wrong tab. I'm minimizing. Uh, according to the Amazon listing, sixty bucks. The press release said fifty. So everything's don't listen to the press releases. But the Amazon page says sixty. Sixty bucks for this. Hell, sign me up for two. I'm not gonna buy two, but sign me up for two. You know. Mm-hmm. Guys, I have waited so long for a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider Marvel Legend figure. Cameron says, will this be a short or a full review? If I had confidence that my full-size Marvel Legends reviews would do good, I would do a full, but it's going to be a short because that's just how it goes. Uh, anytime oh, no. I reviewed full Marvel Legends, doesn't do Honestly, well. I'm kind of glad because I, I was kind of worried that because how bad Robbie did this, this Ghost yeah. Rider we ate. I thought go. we'd <laughs> never get Ghost Rider stuff again with how bad the Robbie... But now, here's the lesson. People have been mentioning it in the chat. Is Robbie back on the table? I think Robbie's back on the table. I don't think his car is. You know, I will, I, I unless, unless Robbie... they pull a McFar- Mc, pull a McFarlane and shrink the thing, right? Yeah, I, I always see. I always thought Robbie was sort of back on the table when they did Midnight Suns Iron Man. That's true. Like, we will, like at least we would have got Midnight Suns Robbie, which is no different from his comic version. So yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I do think we're gonna get maybe like a deluxe, like yeah. SSJ for this, and if this does well, maybe we can get Robbie. I think if we can get, I mean, here's the thing: I would love Robbie's car, even if they did like what McFarland did with the '89 Batmobile and shrunk it from a two seater to a one seater just to make it smaller and more manageable. Also, yeah, there's no electronics, no that's a no, basic no no electronics, car. just straight up just car. I wouldn't mind that, you know. But if we don't get the car, can we at least get him in like a single figure pack and include the chains and the alternate head and stuff? Like, I just. Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider is one of my favorite fictional characters, and it bums me out that that has left, like seemingly killed his chances. But like, I really Hellfire showing up during a Ghost Rider segment—that's timing. Um, <laughs> I really hope this leads down the path for more Ghost Rider stuff. I hope we get Vengeance. I know people keep mentioning Vengeance. I hope we get Robbie. I'm not holding out for Alejandro Jones. <laughs> that's did, did they ever that's did, a bit of a. Did, did, stretch, they, did they ever do Blackheart? Did they ever do? They haven't done Blackheart? Blackheart. He's one of our missing. Um, Blackheart's one of our missing MVC guys, right? So I would say, um, not, you, yeah, sort of uh, adjacent. But I really want a new Elsa Bloodstone. Marvel we Legends do need a new Edge. Elsa Bloodstone. <laughs> She's one of my favorite Marvel characters. I need a werewolf by back. night. Okay, 
I need uh, a both movie, night. both MCU and comic. <laughs> exactly. Make them a two pack for all I care. Um, if any war torn, yeah, I agree. Robbie, you know, no frills car should be a no brainer at this point. I mean, look, I just bought the vamp from GI Joe, right? That was just dropped on the pulse. Here it is, hundred bucks. You know, go for it. Like you could do it. You know, I... <laughs> Mr. Doogie <laughs> says the monkey paw curls. You get Phil Coulson's Ghost Rider from one episode of Agents of Shield. If that gets me a car, yeah. Infinite, that's a good point. If they did a single pack Robbie Ray's, you could get the ramen racer. I could, but I, I need the figure because the, the car without the figure doesn't do anything for me. So, Hellfire Ghost Rider Guide. Yeah, it's two movies. Oh, and then the comics? Oh, well, that's. I mean, I don't know how I do a guide for comics besides just read them in order. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> is, there, is there Epic Collection Ghost Riders? There is Epic Collection Ghost Riders. There, they've done, they've started two Epic Collections. There's a Ghost Rider, which is the Johnny Blaze stuff. And then there's a Ghost Rider Danny Ketch, which is the Danny Ketch stuff. Actually, the timing on this is kind of amazing. Because there was one Ghost Rider omnibus that existed prior to this year, which was the Ghost Rider by Jason Aaron omnibus, which just got reprinted. They are doing a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider omnibus in October, or in September. In October, there's a Ghost Rider 2099 omnibus. There is a second uh, Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider epic collection coming out. There's another Marvel Masterworks volume of Johnny Blaze coming out. There's a ton of Ghost Rider comics coming out right now. And they just relaunched Benjamin Percy series, where, like, the hood is now Ghost Rider, which is weird, but I'm digging it. Um, there's a lot of Ghost Rider happening right now, and considering there's no MCU stuff happening either, that's kind of amazing, and I'm happy to see it, and I'm happy we're getting toys. I was, And please I would give me say, a Robbie Reyes. Because, man, I would say, because uh, this stream plus X-Men 97 has really got me back into Marvel. I was really kind mm -hmm. of down with Marvel last year. And going through DC, you know, reading this old DC, but now I'm slowly getting back to Marvel. I think this stream and X Men Nights have really discovered. Like, oh yeah, I like Marvel so still. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I was kind of in the Marvel Legends mode of, you know, maybe I just, I maybe yeah, I'll just collect X Men. X -Men. But then now, all, look, look, there was one X Men here, but the rest of it, I'm like, yes, give it, give it to me, give it to me all. I'm, I'm in. Falcon Stex says, I have zero connection to Ghost Rider, but I'm a sucker for motorcycles. Buy this motorcycle. It might help me get a Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah. um, anyways, they also showed a rock, and then they played catch with the rock, which I thought was cute. So what's your... Uh, yeah. so? That was should we talk about the oop? Should we do talk about the oops? Let's talk about the oops. Um, not the ood, because this isn't Doctor Who we're talking about, but the oops. Uh, let's turn this off. So, um, guys, I'm so excited. All right. Also, again, again, I do like the new package. I got, again, I did like the package we first saw, but honestly, seeing them in hand, yep. they look a lot better. So here's our trio of guys at their studio, uh, doing the stream stuff. You know, they got Giant Man. I love this Giant Man and Janet here, and then Superior Spider Man. And what's this box in the corner? Um, hey, Hulk Buster. <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> yes, we do know. They did say these are the first six out of ten releases for the 85th anniversary line. Oh man, if these are six are if <laughs> these are six are the I the know. quality of the rest of the line. Oh no. <laughs> what's the rock because... teasing is okay. What's the rock teasing is not a misquote of what is the rock cooking, but um, it is <laughs> it is in fact I don't know what the rock is for because it could be anything. Yeah, I, which it Hulk, could be Hulk uh... Buster. It could be Hulk. It could be. Anyway. I doubt the Hulk, but I doubt the Hulk was gonna come with a rock. That's be gonna funny. be weird. It's probably the comic uh, one that we we usually see uh, toys of. Yeah, no, the big bolt, like the, the Marvel. Sl you know, if, you're mm. with the, if you're familiar with the Marvel Select Hulk comic Hulk yeah. Buster design, it's probably gonna be the same one. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Peacemaker says I joke that the rock is for an Excalibur to be put in. I we're still waiting on that Phoenix. Still waiting on that suit. It's gonna be comic if it's in this line because they didn't show any MCU. I don't think it's gonna be any MCU. I think it's just gonna. No, be it's it's, it's it's all comics. Which, which as great. a comic collect, as a comic, as a comic only collector, this stream made me really happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Hellfire said, "People talking about Marvel recently made me watch the X Men trilogy." Guys, I tell you, X Men is the secret sauce to everything. I know, right? <laughs> Where X Men exists, Marvel succeeds. It's it's the it's facts. It has been the case since 1992. <laughs> <laughs> the times they reject the X-Men is the times they're doing the worst. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it's going to be comic, for sure. I mean, it's just tracks. Guys, I'm really happy. I this, today's, today's news was great, you know? I there was, some, there was some rough stuff in the beginning, but today's news lineup was solid. Like, I'm just excited about stuff. It feels good, doesn't it? 
Mm-hmm. Feels good to end on a really exciting Marvel stream. Like, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy too that they did this Marvel stream on a Monday, so we could talk about it today, and it's fresh as opposed to it being a Tuesday, and then we coming back to it a week later, where kind of the energies died off. Like the excitement is peaked right now, uh, mm-hmm. which is it's so much fun talking about it like that. Kind of like how with Hank and Janet doing my short on them was really fun because I'm like, oh, they're. I didn't even know they existed a week ago, right? And I've already got, like, I already got to review them, so. It's good stuff. Marvel Monday. Yeah, I love Marvel Monday. They need to bring that back. So. I, um... <laughs> yeah, Selfire says, uh, he watched me struggle through Last Stand in real time. Yeah, Elfire kept texting me going, wait, what is... What is going on? Oh, God, <laughs> what's this? Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, watch the Wolverine. It's a palate cleanser. Um, yeah. <laughs> Infinite says trade remastered green for the Danny Ghost Rider figure. I mean, Danny Ghost Rider looks like a much better thing than remastered green, but make choices on your own. Um, uh, I mean, I saw I saw Josh's video of that today. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should just chat for a moment. I I want a breather. I kind of like I got oh, so hyped up. Oh, don't you? Well, I mean, you have the M- you have the MMA um, yes. at this, right? Yes. So, I have the uh, AMA after this. So channel members stick around. We will do an AMA, but uh, I think we'll go chat over there. Um, non-members, you guys got any, like, final thoughts? Throw them out now. Um, I don't know what Sonic with Soap Shoes means. Oh, uh, the, the, the Sonic, the Soap Shoes are the, the shoes that Sonic wears in SA2. Oh, I like those shoes. I didn't know they're called Soap Shoes. Are they called Soap Shoes? Yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're called Soap Shoes because they're based on actual, show, like, oh. Soap Shoe brand. Oh, okay. I like those shoes. Those shoes are nice. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, I think we'll do plugs if the chat... You know, non-members throw out some stuff. Members stick around. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do plugs. We're going to wrap up at 7.30. There will be a little stream that will pop up. 7.30, we will start our uh, member-only AMA. Members. So mm-hmm. if you're a channel member, come join us. If you're not, we'll see you next week. Um, but Benjamin Wiseman's a great reveal today. Yeah, I mean, that was just a solid reveal stream today. So, uh, Ryan, go first. Tell us what you want to promote. Follow me at Ar- uh, Darko Sleeper Tree on YouTube and Twitter. I do art commissions like the one you saw last week's Mebo War Story thumbnail. You want to see more stuff like that for me? Uh, uh, feel free to DM me on Twitter or on San Francisco Protocol. I, again, I do art commissions. So you want to talk about with me about those? Just feel free to DM me here, Twitter, or Discord. Anyways, uh, have a nice night, everybody. I'm going to head off now. See you later, Ryan. Uh, Zeltrax Millennium did a really cool custom of a Morphin Master. You guys should check it out on his Twitter. I uh, also think he posted in our Discord in the Command Center chat. But um, go check that out, because I thought it was really cool. Uh, Kaos, what do you want to promote uh, in our promotion little spot here before we bounce and go over well, to the other stream? Uh, we're going to talk a lot of video game stuff tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And you can do that with sound... My goodness. Yeah, you, yeah you're sound up. Yeah, I'm sound up. I keep thinking, <laughs> of, I keep thinking of all of our names, friends' names that start with S. So yeah, sound we got out, a few of them. I'll put the link in there, because... I can't for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. That's at four like p.m. That. Eastern. Yep. Yep. Four 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 p.m. Eastern. Twitch.tv slash Fighter Cows. King of Fighters is back. The number one English, which ain't saying, but still, hey, that's pretty cool. Yep. Hey, you English know what? Number one King, is great. Uh, King of Fighters. <laughs> yeah. So go check us out tomorrow. We'll hang out there. It'll be a fun time. I may or may not be editing while also fighting, but I'll be definitely fighting. So. We'll see how Wednesday... I didn't announce what Wednesday's video is, and I didn't announce what Friday's video is. And I'm not going right. to say they're both secrets. <laughs> so, it'll be good times. Also, it's funny that, that King of Fighters is the only one that hasn't left a sour taste in our mouths. That's true. Yeah, no... no um, <laughs> fighting games lately. Yeah. But yeah, um, thank you everybody for joining in. We'll be back next week, same time, you know, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, that whole usual stream. But if you're a member, stick around. Uh, it, I'll go set the reminder thing up. Uh, we'll be back at, um, I'll say 7.30-ish, if it's a couple of minutes okay. later. i got to use the bathroom and stuff, and I'll be back. Um, and we'll do that. So until next week, thank you all for tuning in, and have a great one.